started here at Doncaster back in March and today the final acts of the 1994 flat racing season on turf will be played out once again here at the town moor now there is another meeting on the turf that's a small meeting at Folkestone on Monday and as you know the all weather continues throughout the year but this is the last big meeting of 1994 on the flat racing circuit. Now today we'll be presenting the Channel 4 Trophy. We'll be wishing ha Lester Piggott a happy 59th birthday and looking ahead to the richest race meeting in the world, the $10 million Breeders' Cup that takes place tonight at Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. But here at Doncaster, well, it's a damp end, but the racing is good. The overnight rain, the going is now heavy. We get underway with the Remembrance Day stakes over six furlongs. At 1.55, another listed race, the Charles Sydney Mercedes-Benz Selby stakes, where number two, Briar Creek, is an absentee. At 2.30, the big betting race of the day, the £30,000 tote credit November handicap. And then at five past three, can Star Rage win his 10th handicap of the season? and set a 20th century record. Number 15, Blaze Away, a non-runner here. Well, this day is traditionally a big betting day. Let's see where the money's going with Alistair Down. Well, the big money of the morning has definitely been for Cumbrian Rhapsody in the November handicap. Best back horse with Labrooks. 25s, 16s, 14s, 12s, all gone. 14s from 20s with Hills. They've had good money for Bit on the side, who might vie for favouritism with Penny a day. But nobody can give Blushing Flame away. Very weak. And the each way thieves are going for warm spell, which is, you know, the mudlark horse. Shu Jan is the big order in the 3 5 for 2 miler. They've opened up 9 to 4 hills, have opened up Branston Abbey, 11 to 2 bar. And the sneaky one later in the day is Euphilia. That's in our nursery. They've gone taking the 14s. They've filled your boots on Euphilia. It's down to 10s. And the money here, Branston Abbey, heavily laid in the offices this morning, particularly by hills. Two weeks ago here at Doncaster, we had a bonus prize for the first person out of the hat in our picture puzzle. And that was to be a racehorse owner for a day with a runner in our first race here this afternoon. Well, the lucky winner was Mr. John Williams from Bristol, who sadly isn't well enough to be here today, but has told the organiser of the prize, Peter Steveni, that he's absolutely thrilled and it's a really big day for him. So we hope that Mr. Williams is at home and is thoroughly enjoying himself. The horse running in John's name and colours is El Don, trained by Mick Ryan at Newmarket, who ran in the complete... ...and a half, beginning to bunch with Better Get On on the far side, making headway just in after the leaders in the blue jacket, darker blue sleeves. That's El Don, who's finishing well. They're inside the final quarter, and still anybody's race, with Dancing Sue now putting in uh, his bid and coming on very strongly indeed. It's Better Get On on the far side, being pressed now by Dancing Sue, coming between the two is Q Factor. Just below the distance, and Q Factor bursts through, with the white sleeves, is finishing best of all it's going to be q factor i think is going to get this one q factor from ella mckay from dancing sue and then better get on l don finishing strongly is man and may who may get into the frame but up towards the line and it is q factor who wins this opening race the complete design made from uh, game floyd dancing sue and after better get on and l don well, Darren Biggs just shaded out into fifth there, but ran a really great race, was always up there with the leaders, and I hope, Mr Williams, at home, that you really cheered yourself hoarse watching that run. Let's have the SP now with John Tyrrell. There's number 18, Q Factor, 5 to 1 favourite. Second, number 3, Dancing Sue, 11 to 1. And third, number 5, Game Floyd, 8 to 1. The tape paid 5.10 the win. The place is 180, 330 and 290. The dual forecast came to £58.20 and a completed straight forecast paid 60.39 and 19 rand. And at Sandown, the 12.45 went to number 5, Elegant King, at 4 to 1. Second number 7, Good Inside, 11 to 2. And third number 8, Bastinello, 33 to 1. Number 4, Ask the Governor, was 2 to 1 favourite and 8 rand. Chevstow, the one o'clock, first number one, Country Lad, seven to one, second number eight, Mr. Oddie, eight to one, and third number seven, Shrewd John, 130 favourite, eight round. 
Newcastle, the 110, won by number two, Briar's Delight at 7 to 2. Second, number six, Master Favard, 6 to 4 favourite. And third, number nine, another chapter, 10 to 1, 11 ran. Well, there's not too much of the sunny spells that we promised on the morning line here at Doncaster. And after that first race, a few people who had their work well and truly cut out for them were those who had to try and put the divots back on down on the course there. It has now officially gone to heavy going. And uh, as you can see there, the horses were really kicking it up as they came in after our first race. And then straight afterwards, a few very gallant men had to go back and try and uh, replace part of the course. Well, it's a tall order at the best of times, but on heavy going with divots like that, it's quite tricky. And because the going is heavy, we have starred the horses that uh, you'll be seeing this afternoon, the runners and riders, and those are the star next to the horses' names, are those that have performed in the past on soft or heavy ground. Now, there's no guarantee that they will be the actual winners, but we do know that these are proven soft or heavy ground performers. There's 14 of them in the first, the Remembrance Day Stakes. Rolly Gilbert, our commentator today, has the runners and riders rules. Thank you, Derek. Yes, a listed race this one over six furlongs, £15,000 of added stake money. And the runners headed by number one, hard to figure, Ray Cochran at 13 to 2. Two is Beggarman Thief, 10 to 1, Gary Hind. Number three, Double Blue, under Jason Weaver at 7 to 1. Four great deeds, Richard Quinn at uh, 12 to 1. Five is Master of Passion, a 50 to 1 outsider, Michael Tebbett. Six then is uh, Night Melody. Partnered by Kevin Darley at 16 to 1, seven Spaniards close, 25 to 1 for Billy Newton. Then the favourite, Branston Abbey, one of the two in the race, trained by Mark Johnston, 9 to 4 favourite with uh, Michael Roberts. And then 9, Bunty Boo, Richard Perham, 8 to 1, also at 8 to 1 is 10, Karen Nita, the mount of Stephen Davies. 11, to Minuet, who went to post early, is ridden by uh, Dean McEwen, the other 50 to 1 outsider. Then 12, Brari, the first of two, owned by Hamdan Al Maktoum. Michael Hills rides at 20 to 1. 13 is Imperial Bailiwick, John Williams at 14 to 1. And now with a different cap, a black cap, number 14, Ishtiak, 33 to 1. Russell Price, 14 runners. Well, there's no doubt that Branston Abbey will absolutely love the ground and trainer Mark Johnson saddled the winner of the Italian Scent Ledger yesterday. There is number eight, Branston Abbey. Michael Roberts about to get back into the saddle. And watch out for Stephen Davis on number 10, Karanita. He's the leader in the race form Apprentice Jockeys cha uh, Championship. He's three in front of Mickey Fenton, hoping to stretch his leads. Well, John Frankham and John Oaksey have had the good, close look at them. And what do you make of this one, fellas? Oaks first. There's no question that Branston Abbey is a real autumn mare. Eight of her 14 wins have been in October or later. She loves this ground, and although she meets hard to figure on six pounds worse terms than when they met at Newbury, uh, well, you'd have to fancy her in these conditions, I think, anyway, John. Well, she goes on the ground, and she beat quite a few of these, including Stable Companion, Double Blue, Brari, and Night Melody um, at Newbury last time out and double blue has franked the form since but they were looking at hard to figure really consistent campaigner and a smashing race in the labrick uh, gold cup and was fifth last time out so he's been on the go a fair old while hard to figure and uh, fifth at newbury behind branston abbey prior to that he'd been second to a good horse el raffer at uh, newmarket looked really well in good form with himself he's got top weight to carry here nine stone ray cochran on board Let's uh, have a look at uh, Double Blue, the tremendous favourite he must be of Mark Johnson's, who of course also runs Branson Abbey. Well, Branson Abbey beat Double Blue last time they met, but you never can be certain about this fellow. He always, or very nearly always, does his level best. Uh, he's won 10 races already, and you never know, he could do it again. Let's have a look at Ben at Bunty Blue, there she is, looked really well and uh, won both of her last races last season when she was trained by Brian McMahon, she's been running good races this season looked in uh, really good nick she ran in the Abbey uh, four weeks ago finished behind great deeds in that and needless to say a long way behind Locksong but uh, has been running really well in good sprints all season She's one of two Richard Hannon runners here, the other one being Knight Melody, another colt who, although he's one on soft ground, you always think that he runs better on a faster surface, um, but he looked in really good form. So did Beggarman Thief, in fact, I just 
gave him the nod is my eye catcher nice big horse one on the soft ground at uh, Newbury as a two-year-old could be just come into himself let's have a let's have a look at the other eye catchers now on the way to the post let's have a look see what uh, Rawley went for master of passion and down in the betting ring it was the filly Branston Abbey Branson Abbey, very strong, solid at two to one. They took all the nine to four, been money for it in the offices this morning. Bit of money each way, but hard to figure. And they mopped up the early 50s Ishtiak among the pineapples. But Branson Abbey, rock solid, plenty of money for it. Beggar Man Thief, very lightly raced, but uh, ran really well. Second to Mur Tasha on this course uh, last time. And there is Branson Abbey, Michael Roberts. Uh, about whom a book has just been written by Michael Tanner. Uh, very fascinating it is about Michael's education at the South African Racing Scheme School. Branston Abbey two to one favourite now. Six is hard to figure. Thirteen to two double blue, and eight bar those three. That's Master of Fashion, who went down uh, so well that he caught Rawley's eye. I wouldn't be certain whether the ground would suit him. He hasn't ever proved it and was well beaten the last time he ran on fiber sand. Still, this would be a lot softer than fiber sand, I imagine. It certainly would. In actual fact, it, was, um, it wasn't as soft as this, admittedly, but when he won the silver, Air Silver Cup, it was um, certainly, uh, there was certainly plenty of give in the ground on that occasion. You look really woolly, though, this horse. It's difficult to um, judge with any accuracy how they are but um, two or three of these looked as though they'd just come in out of the field there's the minuet she looked well real old character now and uh, dean McEwen having a ride on her for john spearing she always manages to win her share of races and she's already won a couple this year at kempton and uh, she also won it there this is this is her 77th race the minuet the, the two she won were claimers and she seemed to be rather insulted by being dropped down to claimers and hasn't run too well since but let's hope she will today there you are Rawley thanks a lot John and this is the one with the different cab this is Ishtiak number 14 one of the fillies and parted by Russ Price going in without a hitch Branson Abbey nearest the camera the favorite this is Diminuet and this is the latest betting Branson Abbey the two to one favorite it's six is hard to figure seven's double blue and uh, eight to one bar this trio to Minuet then, not yet in, but she is now in with a rush. And uh, problems in the stalls, and that's Beggar Man Thief, who's reared up over backwards. Oh, my goodness me. And uh, the horse looks all right. Let's hope that uh, Gary Hind is OK, too. Beggar Man Thief, uh, obviously still sound. But that's it. They've gone without him. Away they go. Six furlongs, double blue, very fast away over on the far side. And coming with Karen Nita on the near side. It's Bunty Boo showing the best speed in that group. In the centre, Master of Passion is prominent as well. Only just in behind the lead is hard to figure. Branston Abbey is picking up the lead as well on the near side. And they're coming through to complete the first quarter of a mile. With Bunty Boo now joining issue with double blue. A little between them. Then Branston Abbey in three. Master of Passion four. Five is hard to figure. Six making ground night melody with the light blue sleeves. They're all racing over on the uh, far rails and they're coming now down into the last three and a half furlongs and it's still Richard Perham with Bunty Boo from uh, Jason Weaver and Double Blue. These two together, tracking those two now is Great Deeds. They just passed halfway in this Remembrance Day stakes with Branston Abbey now going to third in front of Great Deeds, then Master of Passion and Night Melody. Down to the final quarter, Ishtiak on the near side, hard to figures dropped away and so too Spaniards close. But emerging from the mist as they come now down to the last furlong and a half and it's Double Blue still, Double Blue against the far rails. Being strongly ridden left-handed, but going on by about a length and a half. Great deeds coming. Branston Abbey on the near side. It could be a Mark Johnson one, two. But Brari is finishing best of all. Brari with Michael Hills coming through late. The double blue is going to hang on. Close home. It's going to be double blue from Branston Abbey. Might just have got second from Great Deeds in three. Brari four. These four well clear of the early leader. Bunty Boo followed in by Karanita Spaniards closed. Master Passion Night Melody. Then Imperial Bailey, who made very little show to Minuet was last but two, last but one, Ishtiak, and last of all, hard to figure. So, indeed, it is a uh, one-two for Mark Johnson, at least I think so. That's double blue, clearly on the far side. Double blue, number three, owned by Mr. R.W. Huggins, trained at Middleham by Mark Johnston, his 114th winner of the season. It's 197 for Jason Weaver, and that takes Mark Johnston over the £1 million 
winning mark for this season. Second, Branston Abbey, the favourite. Also Mark Johnston, ridden by Michael Roberts. Third, and it's a photo, in fact, for second place. Third, number four, Great Deeds under Richard Quinn. And fourth, number 12, Brary with Michael Hills. Double blue, then, always up there in the van once uh, Bunty Boo dropped away. Great Deeds came on very strongly in the end. So, too, Branston Abbey in between them in the stripe cap is Brary. Double blue, then. In the end, winning it for the judge, Alistair Stewart has called for with Cameron for second and third. Let's have a look at the start, and Gary Hind being attended there by the medical officers, and probably just a little bit winded. Really nasty incident, that beggarman thief just upset by the minuet when she was banging into the stores, reared over and got a little bit over the back gates in actual fact. And well, I think that uh, probably give him a little bit of time, and you'll see him back in action again this afternoon. Got to remember that these jockeys they weigh next to nothing when you get half a ton of horse coming over on top, they've got no spare flesh on them to protect them at all and interesting way of being carried in actual fact into the ambulance i think if they thought it was really serious they'd have been put onto a stretcher uh, these are these are as you can see paramedics uh, an expert in the treatment of all sorts of injuries and conditions but there's uh, the horse beggarman thief uh, you'll be glad to hear if you backed him that he did not come under starter's orders so you have not lost your money and there's the one who's won the money how's that for enthusiasm his 17th race this season double blue and he jumped out and made it all never mind the mud never mind the weather never mind the hard work uh, well it's a, a real pleasure to watch out he popped, Bunty Boo uh, tried to match strides with him, Branston Abbey on the left uh, in the light white colours with the light blue cap could never get to the leader, nor could Great Deeds tucked in on the rails beh beside, behind him, and nor could Brari in the Maktoum colours, although he makes ground and looks dangerous just for a moment, just before the end. But to tell the truth, none of them were dangerous to Double Blue. Now he won easily at Nottingham. He was six to one on in his last run, and I think that's just done his confidence the world of good. Because although he was challenged by Great Deeds, who travelled so well throughout the race until the last half of furlong, he was always just holding them. And well, I think Mark Johnson's got uh, mixed feelings there. I just think both of these horses are real favourites with him. You may remember Double Blue, one of the first horses to get Mark off them off the mark, so to speak. Won his first four races early on two years ago and he's now talking to Tomo. Yeah Mark, John Frank was just saying Double Blue must be one of your favourite horses, he's oh, done absolutely. you a few good turns absolutely. hasn't he? he's a fantastic horse and another great advert for keeping horses in training, five year old geldings, there's nothing quite like them. Did, before the race did you fancy him to beat Branston Abbey because Branston Abbey was favourite? No not really, no I had said in this ground that it would be uh, Branston Abbey, there's not a lot between them, they're different horses, Double Blue usually better on the firmer ground but today they've gone a slow pace and really played into his hands he's managed to dictate and he was obviously had a bit up his sleeve when they didn't really expect him to but a very special win first time over the one million pounds in prize money congratulations yes, yeah. is that is that a sort of an ambition fulfilled was that was that at the beginning of the season no i certainly didn't even think about it um somebody was just asking me the other day what would be the ambitions for next year yeah. and i said the million pounds would be the target for next year i hadn't really even imagined doing it this year at now I certainly wouldn't like to buy your car after you finish it because it must have so many miles on the clock but even you have excelled yourself in the past week how many miles have you actually flown you've been around the world a few Goodness times knows, yeah, 25,000 or so um, 25, I've been to Australia and then landed back in London uh, on Thursday night and went to Turin yesterday and you had success in the Italians and led you with double trigger yes another one same owner yeah. um, he's had a tremendous week I think his last six runners have won mm. uh, all the doubles and just made of interest what happened to quick ransom because he was a very disappointing in the Melbourne yeah Cup. terribly disappointing and I've no doubt whatsoever that's well below his form it's mm. very hard to compare when you're running against foreign horses that you're never likely to meet at other times but I'm absolutely convinced that was well below his best form that's no reflection on the northern hemisphere horses 
um, it just tells us or reminds us again that it's not easy to travel 12,000 miles and expect mm. your horse to run up to its best. Well, you've just come a few miles down the road from Middleham today. What about Star Rage attempting that 20th century record later on? Things have gone against him really since he, he got the ninth win. Um, the ground turns soft, he's undoubtedly a better horse on top of the ground, so the ground's going to be very much against him again today, but you've got to try. You have indeed, and you've been trying all season. Well done on a great season, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. There's a 5p deduction in the pound there from that beggarman thief, but it was a very popular win in the ring. Double Blue, one of those horses that the punters latch on to week in, week out. Strong at seven, supporting the officers this morning. Branston second and Great Deeds 12 to 1 top third and that's number 197 for Jason Weaver chasing that 200 with some tremendous chances later in the afternoon Saxon made in the November handicap and Fet Gallant in the 3-5 another good day for Weaver First number three double blue at 7 to 1 second number eight Branston Abbey 2 to 1 favourite and third number four Great Deeds at 12 to 1 the tape paid £5.40 for the win. The place is one ninety, one fifty, and £3 exactly. The dual forecast came to £5.40. pence. And number two, Beggar Man Thief, were drawn before coming under orders. And rule four applies. Bookmakers made it up five pence in the pound from all winning bets. Non-runner was number two. That was Beggar Man Thief and 13 run. And a sound down in the one fifteen. First number four, Sound Revalley, 100 to 30. Second number five, Spuffington, 3 to 1. And third number one, Old Bridge, the 6 to 5 on favourite, 5 Ram. Now, if you thought John McCrick was uh, on holiday, you'd be mistaken. It's a charity day. They're, they're getting money for the Cancer Relief Macmillan Fund. And that's why we have a derby coming up right after the break. Let's have a quick look at the runners and riders. They're down at the start, and I tell you what, look at them, just having a look at the parade ring, and look at these barmaids. Yes, they're barmaids from all over the country. They'll be going down to the furlong marker. John Oaksey will be the starter and the judge, and they've got to finish with that pint intact. It will all happen right after the break. Tales of the Black Horse, the Lightning Loot. Once there was a giant who was tired of clamping about the land, putting the wind up people. So he raided his nest egg and went to buy a cart. Where's these giant carts then, eh? Um, how much have you got? Now you need twice as much. I'm a bit short at the moment. Uh, don't worry, I know just the people. Now the card salesman knew that Lloyd's Bank can agree a personal loan on the spot. Sorry. Perfectly all right, sir. <laughs> See, what did I tell you? And the moral of our story, if you need to get your skates on, come to Lloyd's Bank for a personal loan. The Lightning Loan, another legendary service from Lloyd's Bank. The first thing a stuntman learns, belief is everything. I've never been afraid of heights, ever. I guess I have a pretty healthy fear of death. You conquer fear through knowledge. One centimeter this way or that way, and it's 400 miles down. I've got to know this car is going to deliver. Control. I'm a control freak! When I ask you to do something, it responds. Are crazy. <laughs> Energy saving light bulbs. What's the point? I put this ordinary bulb in weeks ago and. <laughs> An energy saving bulb could cut your lighting bill by 50 pounds. 100% pure love. 40 classic love songs to send shivers down your spine. Simply a wonderful collection of the most powerful ballads on the greatest love album ever. 100% pure love. It's on its way. Maybe to your home. A new arrival. A new Andrex. A more squeezable Andrex. Because it's a softer, 
thicker andrex. Squeeze it and you'll see. New andrex is strong, long and now squeezably soft. These are delicious flakes. Honey, nuts, and brown sugar. Bellissimo. That's your last bowl for a while, Gambini. Go, go, go! Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes. Trouble is, they taste too good. If you'd like an information pack on the Volvo 850, call free on 0800 000 850. And that's good news to see Beckham and Thief walking back after what looked a horrific looking rear over backwards in the starting stalls. Good to know he's walking back and nice and sound. But what about the jockey? I know you've just been into the uh, the doctor's room. What's the latest news, Leslie, on Gary Hyde? Well, the horse is moving a bit better than the jockey. Um, mm. The jockey's bruised, possibly bruised bone in his foot, uh, the doctor said. And Gary said he's going to give up his other ride this afternoon. So we agreed he needed to go somewhere warm now to recuperate. I think he is going to want to do by. We have a derby coming up. Up. Let's join John Oxy. I'm very proud to be the starter of the Barmaid's Derby. It's the second year this race has been run. There are 14 runners down the track, about 50 yards down there. They've already raised £2,000 between them between them for the Macmillan Nurses Appeal and I'm just about to raise my flag when I do so they'll be under orders and when I drop it I hope they'll start. Desperately close. Desperately close between eight and nine. It's got to be a photo here. I think we're definitely a photo. I'm not sure whether the stewards are going to take the view that uh, too much beer has been spilt. A great deal has certainly been spilt, but it's a photo between numbers eight and nine. The, the judge has given his verdict. Number eight is the winner, Diane Blackburn of Lock Park, Barnsley. Hooray! <laughs> it was desperately close. Susan Whiteley was second. Number two, Susan Whiteley of Wakefield was second. And third, number 13, Claire Nicholson of Lincoln was third. But there's a new champion in the Barmaid's Derby, Diane Blackburn. Well done. Yeah. Diane, many, many congratulations. <laughs> well done. L lovely. Have you, how have you trained for this marvellous triumph? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Is it your first running, yes. first victory? Yes. <laughs> You've ever tried before? No. <laughs> oh, where, which, bar, which bar do you do you keep? Lock Park Working Men's Club in Barnsley. Uh-huh. Oh, well, they'll be cheering, I hope. <laughs> I hope so. One, wonderful. Did you, did, you, did you carry that or spin it? No, I fell at end. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great. Well, it's lovely in the fall now. I try. Let's, let's have a sip, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was yours. <laughs> and you were second. Yeah. Very, very, very close. <laughs> 
I'm tired. <laughs> well, well done, both Thank of you. You've raised Thank a marvellous you. lot of money. Tremendous, tremendous performance. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> I was really excited. The one that was first past the post obviously had to be disqualified because she ran with the, the jug there and the uh, tray there. So well done on the winner. And Oaks, of course, when it's free, he's always, he's always there. While that race was going on, important news just in. One of the fancied runners in the big race, the Tote Credit November Handicap, does not run. It's number five, Barouge. Barouge does not run, presumably because of the ground. It's pretty soft all over today. We have news of the jumpers at Chepstow today. JT? The 130 won by number five, Her Honor, at 7 to 1. And that completed a 63 to 1 double for Richard Dunwoody. Second, number three, Hebridean, 4 to 1 joint favourite. And third, number nine, Couture Stockings, at 12 to 1. Number eight, Gospel, was the other joint favourite, and 11 ran. Well, there's going to be a few surprises today, and I would think quite a few big price winners on this sort of ground and at this stage of the season. But how's about having a go at something where you've got a very good chance of winning? Well, you've got a good chance of working out which horse this is, because this is today's picture puzzle. And if you can work out the name of this horse that is running somewhere today, you could win £100. We're giving away three £100 prizes, so all you've got to do is look through the runners today. Which horse is that? The guy looks pretty cold. He needs heating up, I would think, and that looks like an old witch. 0891. Double nine, double one, double four. <laughs> well, well, we're all here at Doncaster enjoying a fascinating penultimate day to the flat turf season. Quite a few of our journalists and television colleagues and a few lucky trainers and jockeys are out at Churchill Downs in Kentucky, probably enjoying better weather than we're having here. One of those journalists who's working around the clock for the sake of his art, or so he would tell us, is our own Bruff Scott. He's at the track and can update us on those contenders for this evening's racing. Out here at Churchill Downs, we have a dry, quite warm autumn morning. The temperature is going to be in the 60s, and as ever with these Breeders' Cups, the pressure is going to be on. As you know, it's our strongest ever European squad, and with all of them on the grounds these last three days, the, the atmosphere is somewhere between a, a big fight and the Ryder Cup. You see the likes of Loxong, Hatouf, and Barris here out on the track every morning. Everyone tells you how good they feel. You talk of Sheikh Alvadu and Arazi last time at Churchill Downs, and the dreams start to roll. But to actually go out and walk the track, as I did yesterday, makes you shake your head at just how incredibly small it is by our standards. You can put the whole thing inside York instead of acres of space to spare. And don't forget, the turf track here is actually inside the sand track. The turns are quite sharply banked, but this is almost speedway. And it's not alarmist to seriously wonder how the 14 runners in the mile are going to get round that first full 180-degree turn, which comes less than 300 yards after the start. That said, we do look very strong in the two turf races. What will be crucial is a sweet run through the race. I believe that Barathea might get a good, a good trip along the rail in the mile, and that only Royale might get lucky in the mile and a half. Uh, you probably read that Loxong amazed the clock watchers when she ran 33-2 and two for three furlongs. But in truth, Frankie just let her run, and we all know she only has two speeds, and this one was flat out. Today is six and a half furlongs. There are some speed horses to take her on early. I can't see it at all. My own view is that our best shot comes in the classic. I know it's on dirt, but it's, a, it's the big track. It's a much smoother race. Grand Lodge, Jesus and Cezanne look great, but I'm backing Dernier Emperor to pay for the expenses. Here's hoping. Well, a fascinating evening's racing in prospect. And if after you visited your local bonfire, you're at a loose end, there's still a couple of race courses with tickets available to go and watch the Breeders' Cup races. Those are Goodwood and Newbury, and you can go there for a drink, a bet, and to enjoy the fun. So here they come for our next race. Number one, Al Jazef there with Gary Carter right on his toes. And uh, he's getting just a little bit excited as he canters down, as he leaves the paddock. And as you can see, look at that grey sky today. It's very damp. Dank, I think, is the uh, way to describe it. Here comes Sidi La Passage and Brett Doyle. Let's have the runners. There are only six of them now because Prior Creek has been pulled out. For this, Charles Sidney, Mercedes-Benz, Selby Stakes. It's a listed race over a mile and a half. £15,000 they're going for, Rolly. Indeed, and uh, just six of them, as you say. Headed by number one, Al Jazaf, the mount of Gary Carter, a 12 to 1 shot. Confirmation that Briar Creek is an absentee. In uh, uh, stall two, 
Number three, Lynn Pugwest, John Carroll at six to one. Four, Cedar Le Passage, Brett Doyle, ten to one. And then Cotter Chief, number five on the card. Uh, the seven to four favorite to complete a double for Jason Weaver. Six is Velvet Moon, the only filly in the field, Richard Quinn at seven to two. And finally, number seven, Zils Alzamar, Kevin Darley's mount, three to one. Uh, Al Jazaf, uh, Gary Carter, um, a fairly roughish ride uh, on Al Jazaf, uh, well beaten by Velvet Moon in, uh, in Al Jazaf's last last race, <coughs> and uh, we can see that race. Uh, Velvet Moon in the colours of uh, Sheikh uh, Salman. Uh, has pulled very hard in the early stages of this race but now comes through to catch Tom Waller and Desert Shot and you'll see that Al Jazaf just all it does really is run on at the one, one pace whereas Velvet Moon uh, quickens up really well to go past Tom Waller Desert Shot, Desert Shot rather on this side and Tom Waller on the far side And here's one with a definite chance, Zilzal Zaman. Uh, he's unproven at the distance and not certain, not absolutely certain to act on this ground. He's won on dead ground, but certainly not ground as heavy as this. Nevertheless, he's informed and ran really well in his last two races, notably when he was beaten only two and a half lengths by Lou Huck uh, at Goodwood last time. That was on ground, though, which bore no resemblance to this. Uh, he had on the he had on the other hand run really well here at Doncaster when he just fails to catch Source of Light. Source of Light uh, in the Abdullah colours had jumped off in front. And I must say at one stage halfway up the straight I thought Zilzal Zaman was certain to catch him. But as you see the gap closes but uh, source of light running on really well holds Zilzal Zaman in the end just won't let him pass nevertheless that was a good effort and if he acts on the ground today well he could well be the one uh, but this is a real danger trained by Martin Pipe and ridden by Jason Weaver and what a nice horse it is this uh, Cotier Chief the son of Chief Singer and as one his last two races he's won three times this season both the last two uh, notably uh, last time out when he uh, ran really nicely beating golden ball a length and a half at leicester typical pipe horse tough and uh, if he gets his head in front anywhere in the last furlong they may may find him difficult to get by jason weaver's had a marvelous season Never able quite to catch Frankie de Torre, but nevertheless much the best season of his life so far. Just three more left to go now for his 200. Limpac West is a horse who relishes these conditions. He's a smashing servant, this, to uh, Charlie Alsey. John Carroll's got the mount here this afternoon, and... Uh, well, he ran a good race last time out behind Persian Brave at Newbury. And uh, he's run some decent races in between. His one win at Newbury back um, right early on in the, in the soft at Newbury. Had uh, wing victory behind him on that occasion. But Atlas has got some news. Well, Cottier Chief opened a solid 6-4. to four. There's been a bit of 13 to 8 about, but Labbrooks are backing it. They don't want the Weaver fans to have more than 6-4. to four. Velvet Moon's easy out to fours now. Second best is Zil Zalzaman. The punters are fighting very shy of it in this desperate ground, and the bookies say it's going to be a long afternoon for them and, I suspect, for the punters. 6-4 to four will be the biggest Cottier Chief. Velvet Moon's a filly who was campaigned in both the uh, English and French guineas at the start of the season and very highly thought of and she had her first run over an extended mile, mile and a quarter at Newmarket just a week ago 
Willie Carson rode her on that occasion, dropped her right out, gave her every chance to get the trip, which she did. She's trying another two furlongs this afternoon. You can see there, runs in a drop nose band. She's quite highly strung, knees just settling in. Let's have a look at the eye catchers now. C. De La Passage took my eye. Limpac West, he was the one on the way to the course, and down in the betting ring, it was Cotier Chief. Cotier Chief is the 6 to 4 favourite, back from 13 to 8. Zilzel Zaman, a 3 to 1 chance, and Velvet Moon is 4 to 1 from 7 to 2. Limpac West steady on sixes. City La Passage is 12 to 1 from 10 to 1. And Al Jazaf, another 12 to 1 shot, and they're all quoted. Uh, the runners going in and uh, hunters in the grandstand can't see anything at all. In fact, it's so misty out there. But uh, you're getting a good view, so am I, as we look at the television pictures. This is Limpac West just going in in the red and yellow jacket next to him, Cédé Le Passage. Beyond Cédé Le Passage, the favourite Cotter Chief. You can just see the orange cap, Velvet Moon, the plain dark green strip, and that's it. Away they go. And the first one out of the stalls is Al Jazaf in company with Cédé Le Passage. And uh, settling down in third place after these Limpac West. They're followed by Zils Al Zaman. The present two back markers are the favourite Cotter Chief and finally Velvet Moon. They've gone about a furlong and a half, and it's uh, Gary Carter who's making it aboard Al Jazaf with Limpac West, the white nosed man, in second spot. The senior runner he is, he's now eight years old. With him, though, up on his outside, Cedil Passage. And then comes Zils Al Zaman with the rails position now, is the favourite Cotter Chief and uh, outside of him, Zils Al Zaman, and bringing up the rear is the one Philly Velvet Moon. They begin a slight climb now over on the far side with Al Jazaf still ahead by roughly two lengths from in second place, Limpac West, then Cedil Le Passage still in three, four Zils Al Zaman, and then five, Cotter Chief bidding for a hat-trick and a double for his partner, Jason Weaver, and remaining last, the Philly Velvet Moon. That's the order as they start a turn now over on the far side, and they're now roughly nine uh, well, a little less now about seven and a half furlongs from home al jazaf still cutting out the running al jazaf who's led from the outset and is still ahead with uh Limpac west remaining very prominent in second spot as they begin the turn towards home and they're roughly at the halfway point now of this uh, charles sydney selby stakes with uh, al jazaf hugging the rails from Limpac west said la passage zilzal zaman still to be asked any sort of question by uh, jason weaver is cotter chief and remaining last under Richard Quinney's Velvet Moon. So they're swinging into the uh, straight now, and Al Jazaf remains ahead, but not quite so far, only by half a length or so now from Limpac West. Cédé Le Passage is improving his position too, then tucked in after those three, Zils Al Zaman, the last two as they've been throughout, are Cotter Chief and Velvet Moon. So they're well into the straight now, and they just passed the four poles. Cédé Le Passage now coming on strong with Limpac West as uh, the early leader, Al Jazaf, gives way. Cartier Chief is just coasting, spotting on the left. The black and orange stripes with uh, Jason Weaver ready to pounce whenever he wants. Zils Al Zaman's going easily as well. Limpac West just in front of the pass now by both Zils Al Zaman and Cartier Chief, who uh, comes very quickly indeed. It's these two now going on from Limpac West. They're well inside the final quarter. And Zils Al Zaman over against the rails with uh, Kevin Daly ahead. Cartier Chief is not fighting a great deal as they come down to the distance. And Zils Al Zaman looks like collecting this one. He's really acting on the ground. Cartier Chief, I think these conditions are finding him out. Limpac West will only be third. These three well cleared Al Jazaf, Cedar Le Passage and Velvet Moon. But running up to the winning line, and it's Zils Al Zaman and Kevin Daly who get it very easily in the end from the favourite Collier Chief. Limpac West is third, Al Jazaf remains in fourth place, the last two in the end, Cedar Le Passage and finally Velvet Moon who was last throughout. So the Charles Sydney Mercedes-Benz Selby Stakes has gone to number seven, Zilzal Zaman, owned by Mr. Manor Al Maktoum, trained at Newmarket by Michael Stout, his 108th winner of the season, 7-2 to the winner, and that was 1-5-2 for Kevin Darley, having his best ever season. In second place, number five, Cartier Chief, with uh, Jason Weaver. In third was number three, Limpac West, with John Carroll, fourth home, number one, Al Jazza. That's the winner, Zils Al Zaman. Interesting, because uh, at one stage there were two horses, both cruising, Cartier Chief, and Zils Al Zaman, but when they were asked to go, uh, it was only Zils Al Zaman who could really act on this ground. Cotier Chief found it beyond him to stretch out.
Yeah, with a furlong to go. Well, you looked all over the winner, Cotier Chief, but how these conditions can alter things. The extra furlong, Zil Zalzaman really stuck to his guns. I think it's a big advantage being over on those rails. And it continues this good run for Kevin Darley. First number seven, Zilzel Zaman at seven to two. Second number five, Cotier Chief, the 11 to eight favorite. And third number three, Limpac West returned at six to one. The tape pay 310 the win. The place is 180, The dual forecast three pounds exactly. A non-runner was number two and six ran. And at Sandown, the 150 was won by number one, a rail keel, 11 to eight favorite. Second number six, Giordano, 16 to one. And third, number two, Satterjack at four to one. Non-runner seven and six round. Newcastle at 140, first number five, Highlandman, 16 to one. Second number six, Kilcolan, 11 to one. And third number one, Ole Ole at 11 to two. Number two, Strong Deal was the five to four on favorite. That was a faller and eight round. So, Zilzal Zaman racing on this heavy ground for the first time, plows a lone furrow and comes home alone. Look, there's Greville Starkey in the background, former jockey of Dancing Brave, of course, at the head of the horse on the right. He's the man uh, who is still a work rider for Michael Stout and Jimmy Scott, the hard-working travelling head lad on the left. Michael Stout, of course, in Kentucky for the Breeders' Cup tonight. Plenty to come. Stay with us. Backache, rheumatic and muscular aches, pains and strains. The power and strength of one of today's leading painkillers harnessed in a gel. I believe gel. I believe brings you the same painkilling power in a rapidly absorbed penetrating gel. I believe. Believe in the painkilling power and strength of I believe. Pain relief without pills. New Otex eardrops help disperse hardened earwax and reduce the need for syringing. Ask your pharmacist for new Otex. In the Curry's White Appliance Sale, buy now, pay up to 12 months later on a huge range of top names like Hotpoint, Hoover, Zanussi, Philco and Candy. Buy now, pay up to 12 months later and we'll organize delivery as well. The Curry's White Appliance Sale with massive savings you mustn't miss. Now on at Curry's. We want to be saving the pennies. I want to be splashing out on smoked salmon and champagne. We want to be tightening those purse strings. I want to be wined and dined in Paris or Rome. We might want to be decorating the spare bedroom. I want to be painting the town. With a new Prudence long-term savings account, you can vary the amount you save each month or even take a break should you unexpectedly need to. We want to be having a Bible. Be what you want to be with the flexibility of a prudent savings account. The 1995 Nissan Primera is such a pleasure to drive that occasionally it likes to go for a drive all on its own. kind of enjoyment out of driving? You can with a Nissan. The 1995 Primera. That's it. I took a Brown's advice on the seventh horse in the accumulator and in it came. Seventh. But like my Murphys, I'm not bitter. Especially as I had a side bet on the St. Barnabas steeplechase.
for a proper family meal, pop some chicken in a dish, then pick a Coleman's chicken sauce. Empty it out, add some water, stir it up and pour over the chicken. Cook until tender and serve with nice fresh vegetables. Coleman's makes a real meal. Yum, yum, yum. I love you. Welcome back here to a still slightly grey Doncaster. We've still got our big race to come this afternoon. That's the Tote Credit November Handicap. But before that, let's take a look back to the last Group 1 race of the 1994 flat season here at Doncaster two weeks ago. That was the Racing Post Trophy and the strongly fancied Celtic Swing was had a lot to live up to, but he gave his connections all they could have hoped for and more. His 12-length victory made him Antipo's favourite for next year's Guineas and Derby, so his connections have a lot to look forward to. And I asked jockey Kevin Darley whether they'd all come back to earth yet. It took us a couple of days to sort of land. Um, I mean, watching it on the video time and time again, trying to sort of pick faults with him and, and, and things that could go wrong with him, but he's at the moment, he's, he's faultless, faultless. I mean, normal improvement from two to three, and you would think he's strengthened to be the horse they've got to beat next year. Well, he's lightly raced and he's a big framed horse, so the improvement should be there. He's big framed, but at the same time, he's not a gross horse. He's, he's very athletic to look at. He's not going to get sort of heavy topped. So, like I say, normal sort of improvement over the winter, and, you know, it, it'd be sort of one of those to look forward to. Well, while he's looking forward, this man is looking back because Dick Adderley retires today after how many years returning the starting prices, Dick? Coming up to 40 years. 40 years? You must have seen some mega bets in that time. Yes, yes, I've seen yes, a lot of big punters come and go. Are, are, are plenty still around, or do they last a few yeah, years and yeah, then go? Yeah, we've got some. Still, there's some about now, and, uh, you know, there's particularly there's one up in the Gateshead area, a mature man, uh, likes to lay the big odds on. What 10 to 1 on, 20 to 1 on, <laughs> really? like that. It goes for those, yes. What's the biggest bit you've seen in those 40 years? Well, there's been too many, really, to recall them all. I can remember one at an EBA meeting a few years ago, 70,000 to 20. 70,000 pounds? to 20, and it was a winner, so the man drew 90,000 pounds. So all he won was 20 for a 70,000? That's right, a 72 chance, yes. It amazes me where all this money comes from. Does it you or not? Well, if it was me, I'd have, I would have to print it myself to have that much young. You but, would. Um, yeah. Now, but I in, suppose they're yeah. it, professionals and that's it. But in the old days, you, you used to write for, what was the Sporting Chronicle? Sporting Chronicle, yes. Under what pseudonym, nom de plume? I had a, a, a little column on that called Beat the Book, which Be was Beat the Bookmaker in short. Yeah, and yeah. you did. You were champion tipster on how many occasions? Six times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I was the first tipster in those days to pass the 100 points mark on a one-point stake. You were pretty shrewd, weren't so, you? So, uh, yes, yes, it was a... I had a good run in those, in those years. <laughs> Gay Future. Now, I, I, this is the last big coup. It happened about 20 years ago in Cartmel. Cartmel, the bank holiday, yes. You, you were the man who was there returning the starting prices. Yes, I was the starting prices. Yeah. Now, yes. they tried to have the coup. The horse won, but they didn't pay out. Just put it in. Tell us exactly what happened that day. Well, what happened was this horse came over from Ireland with little or no form to recommend it. Yeah. At all. Uh, no jumping form anyway. Yeah. And in the market, it opened four to one and drifted out to ten to one. No money at all. This is on the course. On the it was ten to one. But the connections of it had coupled it in three doubles and a treble yeah. with two other horses running at other meetings yeah. that were never intended to run. They yeah. were going to be non-runners. Yeah. So in fact, the money kept coming back from the non-runner onto the winner. So it turned so it out to be a single yeah. bet. A single bet. Yeah. Now in those days, if you put a lot of money on a single bet, it yeah. alerted the bookmakers yeah. who notified their man on the track yeah. to bring the price down. So why didn't that happen? Because if you put three doubles and a treble on, yeah. the manager in the betting office or wherever you do it, he looks, he thinks three horses, so he doesn't do anything until the first one's run because yeah. there's no liabilities yet. Yeah. Now if the first one was to run and win, yeah. he would then move money onto the other two to cover himself. But yeah. the other two were non-runners, so it kept coming back onto the winner. I'm with you. Yeah. So the horse won at 10 to 1. 10 to 1. But the, did yeah. they get paid out or not? They didn't, no. People on the course did. Yeah. But the people that tried to work the coup, as it were, yeah. uh, didn't get it, no. Because it was more or less when they went back, the, the bookmakers realised it was a coup and payment was held up. And yeah. then a the court case ensued later than that in the yeah. year. And uh, it was 
you know, it was disqualified, as it were, the bet. Ah, interesting. Yeah. I mean, that was over 20 years ago. The on-course market now, I mean, you know, we've had the recession and everything like that. Not many of us have much money in our pockets. Is the market still as strong, or is it bigger, better, or worse than it was 20 years, 30 years ago? Well, it's the strong market at mm. certain meetings and weak ones at others. It's, it, it varies from day to day, really. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a, there is a lack of... Uh, a lack of big bets. Well, the recession's rising here, too. Yeah. Yes, and you've right. had some great memories over the years. I mean, I know a few of you lads uh, enjoy a little uh, chuckle. What would be your, your, your great funniest story over over the years? I mean, you must have had you must have had plenty. I mean, Stubbsy, I know, is a great mate of yours. He pulls the... He keeps calling you dirty dick for some unknown reason. Yes, because, <laughs> I, could, because I was the only representative from the newspapers at Cartmel that day when this yeah. come off, and they right. thought, you, you thought, I must have helped myself. <laughs> That's <laughs> his joke, you see. You've still got the white five, as I understand. That's Right. Exactly. Yeah, and they, they're no use now. The greatest memory in 40 years of racing. What do you remember? Uh, no, the funniest memory, which yeah. what was printed in the paper of two or three weeks ago, was when, when the judge changed the result at Cartmel yeah. 20 minutes after it was known, the result, for no objection or a steward inquired anything. He just changed the result around. Yeah. And afterwards, he said, because of uh, he used to put a stick in front of his eye, Mm. to watch for a close finish and he said that the rain the overnight yeah. rain had warped his stick <laughs> and bent it so he, he, he then he, he awarded it to the second but uh, he, he never judged again the overnight rain had warped his, his stick. stick that's yeah. one of the great lines that's one of the i great. must remember that uh, what would you change you know if you had a magic one now what would you change to make racing better because you've seen racing inside and out 40 years yeah. well, what would you change the, the changes but things are going the right way now if anything i try to get admission charges down a little bit yeah yes yeah, i mean lots of courses now do concessions for pensioners and the like yes. which is good yeah. but uh, i can i see crowds it's increasing now where i go yeah, yeah. and you're still going to come racing oh absolutely i yes, thought yes, you might yes yeah i love it you can have a bet now as well uh, can't yes 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 i can do it yes dick it's been smashing and i know everybody in the press room wishes you all the very best and thank you for joining me thank you well done Let's join JT. We have news in Chepstow. The SP of the two o'clock, one by number six, Feet Duke, nine to four, joint favourite. Second number one, ANC Express at twelve to one. And third number eight, Newton Point at eight to one. Number two, Court Melody was the other joint favourite and eight ran. So the runners now arriving in the parade ring for our big race of the day. This is the Tote Credit November Handicap, the last big betting race of the season. We'll have it for you right after the break. No, sir. I'm afraid getting home from the accident is a customer's responsibility. Ring your insurance company. Ask them how they'll help you out in a crash. Then ring AA Insurance. You've read Prince Charles's story. Now read Diana's. Starting this Sunday, Andrew Morton's revealing new book about her new life, freedom and its problems, her anger at the palace, her thoughts on her own future and that of her sons. Diana, in the only paper big enough to give you both sides of the story. The Sunday Times is the Sunday Papers. My photography is about life, even when I photograph death. I do all of this because it's about believing my pictures are the truth. If you're documenting life, a moment only happens once. Everything's a one-shot deal. You get it or you don't. What makes me laugh is, you know, getting through the tiniest keyhole and getting it all when they say it's impossible. Photographs are only as good as the position you get in. I can't get a photograph if I'm not in position. This car gets me into that position. The hotel is a disaster waiting to happen. There's so many things that can go wrong. I wouldn't say there's set rules and things that we follow. It's an instinct. Our house is your house. American Express card members can earn points on their cards under the Membership Rewards Program. If I had a, a lot of points, I'd probably have a weekend at the Plaza Athenae in Paris. You can use your points for a weekend in Paris and at hundreds of Forte hotels. Philips has invented the ultimate compact disc player, CDI. It doesn't just play music, it also plays movies. And sounds you can see. It takes games into whole new worlds. 
Philips CDI. One player, countless opportunities. Philips Invents, for you. Friends Provident has been helping people's dreams to blossom for 160 years. By trusting our experience, they've been able to plan for the future and realize their ambitions. We can help you provide for the years ahead too, with savings and investments, with pensions and with life assurance. Friends Provident, at every stage of your life, Friends Provide. We have all the love in the world If that's all we have, you will find we need nothing more percent pure love 40 of the greatest love songs ever together on 100 percent pure love if you'd like an information pack on the volvo 850 call free on 0800 000 850 The owners and trainers in the paddock discussing their horses' chances in the last big flat race of the season, the Tote Credit November Handicap. More on that shortly because it's not too off until 2.30. But of course the national hunt season is now in full swing. And earlier this week some of the top two-mile chasers and some of the top two-mile hurdlers had their seasonal debuts. Let's have a look first at the chasers who were in action at Exeter on Tuesday in the Plymouth Gin Holden Gold Challenge Cup. Let's pick it up in the home straight and we had some good horses in this coming down and jumping the second last travado has already got this race in the pocket behind him in second place deep sensation making ground smoothly on the outside is the gray horse this is absalom's lady paul holly on this and this is the last beautiful jump by travado jamie osborne the jockey nick henderson the trainer this horse is winning on his seasonal debut for the fourth successive time but look at absalom's lady staying on to be second and i would think deep sensation will be a lot fitter next time out but Travado laying down claims already to be two-mile champion chaser. Meanwhile, some of the hurdlers were out in force at Wincanton on Thursday in the elite hurdle. Coming down towards the last, that's Valfine on the left, on the right, Jazira. But watch the horse in the middle in those diamond check colours, the colourful oh-so-risky. Trying to win his first race over hurdles for three years. Here he comes down, takes it up and, ooh, nearly down. And that put, paid to his challenge. Very unlucky. Seems to be an unlucky horse, this. And meanwhile, we have a ding-dong struggle between Valfine on the far side, first time out from the Martin Pipe Stable, and Jazila this side. They're neck and neck, going towards the line. That's producing a closer a photo finish. But Valfine just holds on from Jazila. And once again, the unlucky and running, oh-so-risky, back in third. Confirming a non-runner here, number five, Barouge. I've just talked to David Morley, the trainer, and he says he's pulled him out because of the ground. Now, if he had run and won in this, he could have won the owner's title for his owner, Sheikh Hamdan Al Maktoum. But he said, honestly, the horse would have had no chance at all on this ground. He is a firm ground specialist, and that's the reason, quite wisely, he's been pulled out. Also, we've just heard Thunderheart is a non-runner in our next race. That horse has been injured in the stables. So he's a non-runner Thunderheart in the 305. So we now come to the Tote Credit November Handicap. Can you end the flat season with a win? The going is heavy, the trip is a mile and a half, and the last race incidentally was run 14 seconds slower than standard. I must say I do like the look of Peter Easterby's Cumbrian Rhapsody here. I saw a win on Monday at Newcastle and I think she's got a very respectable chance. But let's get the full list and remember those that are starred have already shown that they can perform on soft or heavy ground. Rolly Gilbert. Yes, Derek. Well, they'll need to, of course, really testing conditions now for this 30,000 pound added race. The field headed by number one, Beecham Hero, under Gary Carter at 16 to 1. Two is Master Charlie, Billy Nunes, 25 to 1. And then uh, three, Penny a Day with an eight pound penalty. Kevin Darley, the seven to four favorite. Four is Mr. Confusion, Lester Piggott. Baruj, as you've heard, a non-runner because of the ground. 
Number six gone from Burton is wearing blinkers today for the very first time. Is written by Michael Roberts, 25 to 1. It's 20 to 1, number 7, Unforgiving Minute, Ray Cochran. 12 to 1, number 8, Her Majesty's Runner, Whitechapel, Michael Hills. 9, William Tell, John Carroll, 14 to 1. 10, Daru, John Stack, claiming 5 at uh, 50 to 1. And then number 11, The Flying Phantom, 16 to 1 for uh, Philip Robinson. 12, Saxon May, Jason Weaver, 16 to 1. 13 is uh, looking for a rainbow, Michael Wiggum at 33 to 1, 14 Googly, John Williams 14 to 1, 15 Blushing Flame under Jimmy Quinn at uh, 9 to 1, and then uh, 16 Bit on the Side, written by David Harrison at 8 to 1 shot, 17 Warm Spell, strongly fancied Gary Bardwell 10 to 1, 18 John Zack 20 to 1, Alan Mackay, and then uh, 19 Cumbrian Rhapsody with a four pound penalty to carry in this race. Joe Fanning rides 14 to 1. 20 is Bowman, Stuart Lanigan claiming the full seven at 33 to 1. And then 21, which is uh, Folly Finness under John Lowe at 33 to 1. 22 Robert E. Lee, Nicky Adams 40 to 1, also at 40 to 1. 23 World Express for Nick Carlisle. Then it's uh, Hills are number 24, Lindsay Charnock at 33 to 1. And a proton number 25, a 25 to 1 shot. Seb Sanders can't do the weight. He's putting up six pounds over at seven stone eight. 24 runners then for the feature race, the tote credit November handicap. What a wonderful race this is, I must say. A real good closing to the season. As competitive a mile and a half handicap as you could have under any conditions. And of course, under these conditions, it becomes for the horses. Uh, an ordeal, a pretty good ordeal for the punters too, except that you want to follow those stars you put on the the mudlarks. Well, here was one of, one of the horses who has a star, and he's got about four stars for consistency. He's won four times this season, including his last three runs, and those runs have uh, suge strongly suggested that he's getting better and better instead of worse. Uh, here's the Ladbrook handicap. And Penny a day is already in front. Watch her bit on the side and Proton. Bit on the side did not get at all a clear run. Uh, Proton, as far as I could see, but just ran on at one pace. Bit on the side, as you can see, is closing the gap on Penny for a day. Penny a day. But uh, personally, I think Penny a day won with plenty in hand. He's six pounds worse off today. Carries an eight pound penalty. Will the ground make that an insuperable burden I don't believe it will but it's possible Blushing Flame is a horse who's had a little bit of a break during the season he ran a smashing race at Ascot behind Wizard King that was good form he must have just jarred himself up a little bit on that occasion because he then didn't run for some time came back with a really promising performance at headquarters and then went one better last time out when he, I thought he won, he won um, with a fair bit in hand that was at Ascot had a decent horse in West Point behind him also warm spell and John's act to take him on again this afternoon so blushing flame let's have a look at them just this there uh, they're making their way out now that's gone for a Burton. Coming out there was uh, Master Charlie. The tube horse won't help him this afternoon. And those colours. Beecham Hero, the top weight. Gary Carter, Blushing Flame. There's a horse who's an interesting one. One of Peter Harris's unforgiving minutes. Having his second run of the season. That was Penny a day and Kevin Darley, Whitechapel. Coming out just in front of World Express. This and is Cumbrian Rhapsody, the very much fancied Cumbrian Rhapsody with the star in the front of Joe Fanning. And there he is, the birthday boy. Lester, 59 years old today, on Mr. Confusion, uh, and what a chance he must have. Mr. Confusion ran a tremendous race in the Cambridgeshire last time out to be third. He certainly likes soft ground. Whether he likes it quite as soft as this remains to be seen. But, uh, well, he has a great chance of giving Leicester a birthday present. It'll be his first win since Tintagel.
but uh, it's entirely possible. Let's have a look at the Cambridgeshire finish. Halling has already taken the lead, and uh, as he and Hunters of Brora uh, fight out the finish, just look at the ground Mr. Confusion makes. Uh, he comes past William Tell uh, at this stage, in fact, uh, stays on into third place, never looks like getting to the first two, but Leicester isn't really very hard on him. He didn't have all that hard a race that day. Maybe he'll repay the great man this afternoon. Well, Penny a day, solid seven to one favorite here, with Bit on the side is well back this morning, now eight. They don't want to know Blushing Flame, it's on the slide out to nine to one. Warm spell, picking up some of the soft ground money at tens, and that big Merley morning punt on Cumbrian Rhapsody is firmed down to 12 to one. There's a bit of sentimental money for Leicester's birthday. Hills laid a 14,000 to 1,000 each way. That's 12s, but Whitechapel and William Tell are both on the slide, out to 12s and 14s, respectively. Penny a day is going to go off favourite, but bit on the side is very strong behind it. Now then, a horse who could run a big race here is William Tell, number nine, in the green and yellow quarters with the white sleeves. And this horse was just behind Mr. Confusion in the Cambridge. I've been joined by his trainer from Midland. Mickey Hammond, what chance of getting your revenge, Mick? Well, hopefully he's a great chance in the race. It's a big step up in distance and on ground that's very testing. Mm. We're sort of going into unknown territory. I mean, the trip, he's never won over a mile and a half before, so presumably the orders to John Carroll were to sit tight and just come late, hopefully? Well, basically I've said to John Carroll to, to ride your own race and do as you think is right at the time. Do you think anything's going to come from behind in this sort of ground? Well, horses, just they just seem to plod away, don't they? Yeah. Nothing seems to quicken up and sort of go in a mad gallop or whatever because it's just testing ground but this horse has been well supported in the anti-post market how has he been working at home at Midlam? yeah we've been very happy with him at home he's been working extremely well he's basically been bought by mr hemmings to go hurdling when mr hemmings thinks the time is right um he may even sort of encounter this sort of ground in the in the winter hurdling they'd call this good jumping ground wouldn't they? david nicholson would probably, I know that. probably good jumping ground but it, for, for flat horses it's very testing he's only a three-year-old he's a mm. fair bit of weight to carry mm. we're just hoping that he gives a good account of himself hope it all goes well for you mickey thank you thank you okay. yes he's he's definitely got a chance if and it is a big if he is equally good in these conditions and over this distance a mile and a quarter is the furthest he's tried so far so as Mickey says he's uh, going into new territory and uh, it'll be a little bit surprising if he uh, is running on quite as well as some of his rivals certainly a horse with scope William Tell and he looks as well as I've seen him look all season nice spare ride for John Carroll Warm spell. There's a horse who's been running well. He's won a few races already this season. He's also been second, showing some very consistent form. He was second to Major Bugler at Newbury on heavy going last time out. And uh, had Folly Finesse and looking for a rainbow well behind him. And prior to that, he'd been behind Granby Hall at Chepstow. That was on uh, decent ground. I've a couple of others uh, behind him on that occasion. But his last win was at uh, Newbury on soft going where he stayed on really well had Tudor Island new reputation bit on the side and some other decent horses new reputation and a smashing race in the Cesarowicz and uh, he's a very consistent horse that been on the go a bit Whitechapel on the other hand he didn't make his debut this season until much later on sort of early August time given a smashing ride by Frankie de Torre at Ascot on softish ground and uh, he certainly run some good races since then Whitechapel and uh, that included a good run last time behind Trans on what Ascot he's one of those who's guaranteed to get the trip let's have a look at the full look at the betting now with John thank you John and Whitechapel is in the market at 12 to 1 a penny a day and bit on the side showed 7 to 1 and a blushing flame is 10s from 9s Warm spell is steady on the 10 to 1 mark, and now a bit on the side is 7 to 1 from 8 to 1, penny a day 15 to 2 from 7s, blushing flame is 10 to 1 from 9 to 1, and warm spell also at 10s. 
Whitechapel on 12s, Mr. Confusion 14 to 1, together with Googly and Cumbrian Rhapsody and William Tell. Beecham Hero 16 to 1, together with Saxon Maid, The Flying Phantom. John's Act is a 20 to 1 shot, along with Unforgiving Minute, and Mr. Charlie is 25 to 1, together with Proton. Gone for a Burton 33 to 1. Beaumont also a 33 to 1 chance, along with Looking for a Rainbow and Folly Finesse, and also Hillsar and Robert E. Lee. World Express at 50s, and Daru 66 to 1. Googly is one who definitely likes the soft ground. Uh, she, this five-year-old mare, uh, trained by John White, has uh, been running well all this season. Uh, she won over hurdles last winter and must have certainly ran in these conditions. She won't, certainly won't be undone by the ground. She looks really well, Googly. Fine big filly. But a uh, bit on the side has undoubtedly got a chance uh, to turn the tables on penny a day. It is possible, as I told you, bit on the side was uh, just a little bit unlucky in getting his run when he set off in pursuit of penny a day. I don't believe he would have caught penny a day in any case, but uh, there he is. David Harrison rides today. Well, John Oaksy, quite right, might well turn the tables a bit on the side. The punters think so. Now, clear favourite at 7-1. to one. The morning gamble sustained on course. Eight penny a day, a warm spell into nines. Labrooks are back it, don't want the each-way liabilities. So it's seven's clear favourite, bit on the side to land the touch for Musman. Alan Morris, who looks after warm spell, has won the £50 best turned out. Well done to him, but we're now looking at Cumbrian Rhapsody, who's having her second run of the week. She won really nicely at uh, Newcastle on Monday. And she's already won before this season at uh, Haydock on a firmish surface, but she's quite happy when there's some giving the ground. She's got a chance that uh, it's a big prize chance and uh, well she's got a another stable companion who's got a chance running at Newcastle later on but let's have a look at the eye catchers Googly caught her eye in the paddock looking for Rainbow didn't on the way to the post I'm not surprised that Mr Confusion caught Rawley's eye and uh, down in the betting ring well you've just heard Alistair say there was money for bit on the side and uh, well blushing flame he's hard to lay I was just talking about jumping at Newcastle, but at uh, Sandown, a great race there to the Gunpowder Chase, and Jubasida just got the better of Docklands Express. Wonderful news that for David Nicholson, who of course took over Jubasida for the first time this season, uh, from her, uh, and wonderful news for her owner, owner too, who was uh, owner trainer and decided to let the Duke have a try. There's Lester, Mr. Confusion, a big white nose band you'll be able to watch for. That's John's act in the uh, waspy colours. One, one of the outsiders, but uh, let's go with Lester. you see that he's just got a hand on Mr. Confusion's uh, mane, plaited mane, just in case of ructions. A really lovely horse, Mr. Confusion. Really uh, got a nice attitude. got something a little bit special about him he's got the ground that he likes the first time today John Zach's the last one in it's a fascinating November handicap last big one of the season here's Rawley thanks John yes the start of Jerry Scott Sean McDonald have them on their way with a mile and a half to go and the flying phantom was just a little bit slow out of the stalls that's the grey trailing the field in the early part of the race but uh, quickest away, one of the early leaders, Mr. Confusion, in fact. Mr. Confusion with Saxon Maiden looking for a rainbow. These three vying for the early lead. They're followed by Robert E. Lee, very prominent on the inside. Just after Robert E. Lee comes Proton. Up on the extreme outside, Whitechapel is running well uh, also. But it's looking for a rainbow, being tackled now by Robert E. Lee. These are one and two, followed by Proton against the rails, and then Mr. Confusion. And uh, just in after that uh, leading group, as they complete the first quarter of a mile, comes warm spell just in after warm spell against the fence is uh, 
mid on the side. And after them, Saxon Maid has dropped back a place or two. Whitechapel is now midfield in company with the Flying Phantom, who's made very good ground now. After the Flying Phantom, who still improves, going right up into about eighth place, uh, comes uh, Unforgiving Minute, who's followed by Folly Fit Nurse. And they've now recovered rather more than three and a half furlongs. And towards the back of the field in this uh, part of the race are uh, Bowman's with Beecham Hero and Googly. And uh, well last at the moment is the complete outside of Daru. They're inside the final seven furlongs and looking for a rainbow still uh, makes the running from Robert E. Lee in second spot after those Proton. The Flying Phantom still making ground. Whitechapel is there. Cumbrian Rhapsody as well. And they're now at halfway in the Toad Credit November Handicap with still Michael Wiggum and looking for a rainbow ahead of uh, Robert E. Lee and Proton after them. Penny a day now beginning to finish well. Penny a day, the 15 to two shot, second favorite behind bit on the side at seven. It's nine's warm spell, 10 to one bar this trio. Into the straight they come and running on now down towards the final half mile. And Proton now comes through to dispute it. Proton with looking for a rainbow over against the rails. Blushing Flame is finishing well, staying on in the ground. Three and a half to run. Proton it is by a length from Blushing Flame. Also trying to get on terms just in after those is uh, Penny and Day. Just after Penny and Day comes a bit on the side. They've only got two and a half to run. Proton with Penny a Day now coming very strongly indeed. Penny a Day bidding for a four-timer and could well complete it. Penny a Day, but now Saxon Maid starts to run towards the extreme outside nearest to us with the white sleeve. A furlong and a half to go. Penny a Day from Saxon Maid and Proton. And after those three comes a uh, bit uh, on the side. They're nearing the final half furlong now, and it is Saxon Maid brought through by Jason Weaver to take it up late. And Saxon Maid is going to win this one in the end quite comfortably. They're finishing like routed cavalry, but Saxon Maid gains the upper hand. Saxon Maid, Jason Weaver win the November handicap from Penny a Day and Seth Proton stays on to be third. Warm spell in the end, four, followed by Blushing Flame. And then Beecham Hero followed in by a bet on the side, John Zacton, Googly, then Cumbrian Rhapsody, the Flying Phantom, and Beaumont. After them came World Express, reading back to Hills are an unforgiving minute, and then Daru. After them, Robert E. Lee dropped right away. And in the end, the back markers included Whitechapel, Master Charlie, with Mr. Confusion, and also gone for Burton. And uh, in the end, more or less walking over the line were both William Tell and the longtime leader looking for a rainbow. So, the winner, the horse you just saw in shot, number 12, Saxon Maid, this Sadler's Well filly, owned by Sheikh Mohammed, trained in Newmarket by Luca Kamani, that takes him on to 47 for the season. It's a double for Jason Weaver, he's now within two of 200, an amazing score for him, champion apprentice only last year. In second place was a number three, Penny a Day, with Kevin Darley in third was number 25 that was proton who ran really well with that overweight to seb sanders and fourth home was number 17 warm spell under gary bardwell saxon made though wins the race and wins it in the end very very comfortably indeed saxon made and uh, jason weaver he's on now 198 for the season tremendous effort this from jason weaver and just too short now of that 200 score and he's had a great run admittedly from mark johnson's horses but he's been a real grafter he's been up and down the country he was in italy yesterday to ride double trigger for mark johnson and as penny a day led them into the straight it's as though it was uh, all over but he's brought this filly really quietly onto the scene and well you saw for yourself she's won nicely in the end from the three furlong marker it was proton who was just leading them the reg acres train runner and bit on the side the filly come in looking uh, obviously dangerous just for a moment blushing flame over against the rails he's just beginning to tie up but now look for saxon may just coming on the outside of warm spell penny a day i thought he was going to gallop right the way to the line the way that he won here last meeting but saxon Maid's just quickened up the better and well this grand adam strung out like the cavalry john certainly did the, i suppose you'd say that the, the penalties perhaps made the difference to penny a day eight pounds is an awful lot in this ground but saxon made stays on so well that you can't say that uh, she's anything but an absolutely deserving winner and a beautifully bred one too by sadler's wells he may not have uh, been a tremendous stayer but he's produced more and more good horses 
Well, the punters' cheers went up when Penny a Day hit the front, but it was soon drowned out by screams of delight from the rails men as Saxon maiden Jason Weaver came and did the business. Number 198 for Jason, giving him 135 to 1 double today. Penny a Day well back, second favourite, went off just second best a bit on the side. Proton the rag in third, 25s. An important money saver, we think, that warm spell tottered into fourth, but as John said, they were strung out like the cavalry. It looked like the finish of the four-miler at Cheltenham. But a terrific result for Jason. Another Sadler's Wells filly loves the ground. All his relations, all her relations have won on the soft. 16 to 1 the winner. First number 12, Saxon made at 16 to 1. Second number 3, Penny a Day, 15 to 2. Third number 25, Proton at 25 to 1. And the fourth horse, number 17, Warm Spell, returned at 9 to 1. Number 16, Bit on the Side, with 7 to 1 favourite. The tape paid 16.50 the win. The place is 3.90, 2.30, 4.10 and 2.10. The dual forecast came to 51 pounds and 50 pence. A non-runner was number 5 and 24 ran. And in Newcastle, the 2.15 went to number 1, Morcelli, 130. Second, number 4, Chief Minister, 3 to 1. And third, number two, Cumbrian Challenge, nine to four favourite, six ram. Oh dear, it's been a bad day. Oh, what is he going to do? Is he, <laughs> is he dead or is he asleep? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, I think he'd be a lot happier if he'd back this horse. Saxon made there she is. Saddlers Wells, that they were talking about there. Saddlers Wells costs a hundred thousand pounds a service and is uh, without doubt the stallion of the 90s stands in ireland and he does breed some outstanding racehorses and this horse incidentally has confirmed sheikh mohammed as the leading owner in britain for 1994 the only one who could have beaten him was his brother sheikh hamdan with Baruj. but when that was withdrawn well he couldn't catch him and now this horse's win which wins what 25,000 pounds confirms sheikh mohammed as leading owner here in britain yet again meanwhile in the jockeys championship let's see how it looks frankie of course well he's well clear 233 frankie's riding tonight uh, don't forget lock song in the first there tonight we're all we're keeping our fingers crossed there and frankie's gonna have a couple of weeks holiday i know in the caribbean after that jason weaver he had a treble last saturday at newmarket a double so far today and he's got a good chance of a treble in the next live race on channel four you know in any normal season he would be crowned champion jockey pat Ed he'll be going freelance next year he could be a major contender to recapture the title 154 and Kevin Darley best ever setting a new record for a northern jockey 151 winners outstanding performance by those four at the top of the jockeys table and just a matter of interest I've got the man of the moment Jason Weaver three last Saturday going well again this Saturday that looked hard work out there Jason it was a bit of a slog you know they went very very fast hmm. um, which probably actually suited my filly, you know, mile and a half in this sort of ground is probably her optimum distance and round, so it was good for her. Did you think you were going to get there about four out, though? Four out was it's a long way from home in this ground, you know. Probably two and a half down when we got a bit of daylight, she started to pick up. I thought, you know, unless something comes from behind, we beat what's in front of us. And it stayed on well. Yeah. 198 winners. You just think in any normal season, you'd have won the Jockeys' Championship by about 40 or 50 winners. Um, ifs. There's yes. a lot of ifs. Yeah. If I didn't have something, um, I'd be called Julie Weaver, wouldn't I? You know. So we can't go on. <laughs> we can't go on live thinking about that, can we? You shouldn't have said that because from now on you'll be known as Julie Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday you were in uh, Italy. What do you have? Double, double trigger. Double trigger. Yeah. One there, ledger over there. Yeah. And uh, what was that like? Very good, you know. If we're calling this bad ground here today, you should have seen it there yesterday. It would definitely have been abandoned. You know, it was probably an inch of water on the track in different places but yeah. he won easily and you won this race last year with uh, quick ransom we won't be seeing him again because he's going to continue his racing career but how hard has it been for you i mean frankie's had a hard season he's going to have a holiday what about you i think when you're riding a lot of winners which i've been lucky enough to do this year um your confidence is high you don't get start feeling tired you know and things are just an enjoyment and one ambition for next year how are you going to look at 1995 Obviously, I'm going to attack it in the same sort of style and aggression that I've done this year, you know. So all I can do is go start from January the 1st and give it my best shot. Could be a good race next year between you and Frankie. There's a lot of other jockeys there too, you know. There are. Have a good 1995 and well done this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. 
A result from Sandown, the 225, won by number two, Dubachilla, five to four favourite. Second number one, Docklands Express, at two to one. And third number three, Simpton Abbey, ten to one, and four ran. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we offer our congratulations to the connections of Saxon Maid, the winner of the last major race of the 1994 flat season, the Toad Credit November Handicap, providing Jason Weaver with win number 198 of the season. Well, this valuable competitive handicap has been sponsored for the first time by the Horse Race Totalisator Board, and it's my pleasure to invite the chairman of the Horse Race Totalisator Board, Lord Wyatt of Weaford, to present the trophy for the Toad Credit November Handicap to Paul Morrison, who is representing the winning owner, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. Well, lovely scenes there in the winner's enclosure. Well done to Jason Weaver. He really is a super lad, and he'll be all the stronger and all the better in giving Frankie a good fight next year. Mm. Bit of less good luck for Luca Kamani's stable. Their horse that's been withdrawn late this afternoon, Thunderheart. The vet's overlooking at him in the stables just now. He's also looking at another runner from earlier this afternoon, Imperial Bailiwick, who struck into himself quite badly and is having to be stitched. But the good news is that Beggarman Thief, which looked the worst incident of the afternoon. He seems absolutely fine. I've no doubt he might be a little bit stiff tomorrow, but at the moment his connections are very happy with him. So let's hope we don't get any more injuries for the afternoon. A result from Chepster, the 235, won by number one, Flapjack Lad at 13 to 2. Second number six, Valianti, 8 to 1. And third number three, Captain Burt, 16 to 1. Number two, Green Sphere was the 130 favourite and 12 ran. Now here's your last chance to enter our uh, very topical picture puzzle, given the time of year. There's a very unpleasant looking witch. Something to heat you up, sir. Ye book of spells, it says. And a very, uh, I don't know if he's scared to death or cold. Anyway, if you know which horse running somewhere this afternoon that represents, please call us very quickly on 0891 991144 and there are three £100 prizes up for grabs. One more race to go here at Doncaster this afternoon, and when that race is over, it'll be the last racing result read by the man we know as JT. John Tyrrell, you're retiring in a few minutes' time. It'll be very sad to see you go, but when did it all start? How many years ago? 17 years, actually. 17. It all started at Southern Television yeah. with Fred Dynage, who had a curious idea. Uh, to do a program in Southport, yeah. um, and I had to play a character called the Mystery Tipster. And they blackened you out, didn't That's they? right. Yes. I appeared in silhouette, and the idea was that the punters had to guess who I was, yeah. which wouldn't be difficult, really, I suppose. With, after a, voice, the end, with yes. a voice like that. <laughs> but yeah. on the other hand, uh, I also had to tip some winners, and we were a bit lucky. Uh, I managed to give some very good winners for uh, big handicaps, mm. and in particular, in particular, the Schwetz Gold Trophy um, in 1977 which was won by True Lad at 14 to 1, 14 to and that's one. what really set me off. And then you graduated to network TV, and uh, it was World of Sport. Do you remember the good old days, the IDV7 oh, yes. and Dickie mm. Davis sitting there with his... And, and you sat, where did you sit? Well, I sat in a box uh, a little way away from Dickie, um, yeah. compiling the results with Joe James, who still works with me now after Joe all this James, time. Joe James, yeah, yeah, he's with us. And age, yeah. Uh, he's still with us, and... Uh, I, we, we were sort of tucked away in a corner, um, and then I was a voice man on the programme, essentially, that was the thing. You were a voice man with Bob Colston. That's and, right. Uh, you had a nickname, you two. What was that? Well, we were called the Colonel and the Major, yeah. and it all started because Bob and I had a habit of popping up to the bar at 12 o'clock before the programme started. And some of the younger members of the production team thought we were a couple of old codgers standing in the corner, like yeah. somebody at St. James's Club, you know, the East India or somewhere. Yeah. And consequently, they dubbed us the Colonel and the Major. Yeah. Uh, and the name stuck, and that's how it happened. Well, you weren't a, you weren't a Major, though, were you? No, I wasn't. That's the whole joke. I was a corporal in the pay corps, and Bob Colston was an AC Plonk in the RAF. <laughs> <laughs> we were never commissioned officers at all. No. I love it. Well, Bob Colston, as you know, is still reading the football results on ITV. 4 5 2, Queen's Park 0. And finally, Ross County 6, Albion 1. Hello, Major. I hear you retiring from the voiceover business after all those years of reading the racing results on ITV and now on Channel 4. Well, well done, sir. Great, great 
thing to do. I'm sure the people in the racing world will really miss your voice. But I remember you, of course, working on the old World of Sports programs for all those years, where we had a, a wonderful time together as the two unseen voices for sport. Well, I'll raise my glass, Major, and say good luck to you, John. I know you're going to do some writing work now. All the best. Long and happy retirement to you. Lovely to yes. see Bob in vision. Was it uh, water or a touch of gin in that part? I wouldn't like to guess. <laughs> I wouldn't like to guess. <laughs> you, you started in the theatre, didn't you, a long time ago? Yes, I did. That's quite right. Uh, I started in the theatre. I went to the Webber Douglas School of Speech and Drama way back mm. in the 1950s. Mm. And for ten years or more, I was a professional actor. And that really is how I got into television anyway. And it's interesting you say that because John McCrick, never one to miss an opportunity, made reference to your theatrical background a, a couple of years ago on Channel 4. Now, JT, let's have a word with you. Your velvet tongue giving the results to us, thousands of results you've read. But in the 3.35 at Ascot, the Cornwallis Stakes, Lord Olivier ran. Now, I know you were a close friend of the great man, and I was horrified when Lord Olivier ran a new market last week. One horrible bookmaker called 13 to 2, Lord Oliver. Absolutely disgraceful. I certainly rem remonstrated with him. But one uncouth lout doesn't make up all the bookmakers we know, but you as a fellow Thespian, and of course, I'm sure, JT, you called him. Larry, how do you reckon Lord Olivier would perform as your understudy? Well, I can only say that the result from Banger, the 325, was won mm. by number two, the Demon Barber, at 4 to 1. The second number five, He Who Dares Wins, 100 to 30. And number six, Pro Plus, the 11 to 4 favourite, was third, and seven ran. Absolutely brilliant, JT. You bring all the drama to it. But I hear as well as your second understudy, oh you've got Sir John Gielgud with you. Oh, dear boy. Uh, the 340. One by number one, Jocks Byrne, 94, joint favourite. Second number two, Kayleigh Boyd, 92. And the third horse was Hithal at 11 to 4. Number five, Knowing, was the other joint favourite. And five, Raneth. <laughs> <laughs> Five runners. You actually worked with Olivier, do you say? I worked with Olivier. I yeah. carried a spare in Coriolanus, I think, at Stratford um, in about 1959. <laughs> you carried uh, a spare. Well, I, I, I can claim to have acted with him. Yes, that is but only something. just. <laughs> You've got many, many memories. And when you get back to your little house in Newmarket tonight, and you're sitting with your feet up in front of the fire with one of your dreadful martini cocktails, <laughs> which make some Channel 4 <laughs> presenters fall out of bed when they get home, uh, what, what is your greatest memory? What, what would you back on? Well, I think it would have to be the 1979 derby. It was the first derby I ever covered on television. Mm. Uh, it was the 200th derby, so it was a big occasion. Yeah. There were yeah. lots of runners. The Queen had a runner. Pickett rode for her, I think a horse called Milford. Steve Cawthon's first derby. Uh, and, of course, it was won by Troy in the most exciting race that I think probably I've ever seen. And uh, Just take me back. Well, that was pre-computer days, wasn't it? The results in those days. You were telling me you had to write them out with a pen or something. Well, I didn't write them out. I, my cocky Moore, my uh, predecessor, he used to do it, but I had a graphic artist because nobody could read my writing. Yeah. But a chap sat next to me, uh, literally scrawling out the, the names, you yeah. know, and put them on a card. Uh, and then that would be popped into a box in front of a camera, I would read it, and if there were more results to come, the scene hand would whip out the cards in succession, <laughs> and I would read them, and that was yeah. how it was done. <laughs> and nowadays it's just all... all da -da -da -da. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. not quite the same. <laughs> well, that was the result of the derby, but the race itself, it was something very special. I remember Troy coming from an awful long way back, and Ken Butler, I remember he was rather keen on it, wasn't he? Yes, well, Ken was a paddock commentator then, yeah. uh, and in those days, of course, the tape returns uh, uh, were declared to a £10 stake mm. and I think uh, Northern Baby the third horse paid 172 mm. and uh, Northern Baby had some very good form yeah. in France uh, but hadn't been seen in England before and Ken spotted this horse in the paddock thought it was a good chance started at 66 to 1 yeah. and he scrambled down from his perch and ran across the toe during the race and had a massive not during the race before the race yeah. and had a, a, a really good touch on the toe I think that uh, well as I say 172 it paid to the 10 pence it was something very special it was the 200th derby is Troy and Willie Carson in the lead going away from Dickens Hill Northern Baby Ella Man of Moon, Life at Wish as they come out towards the line it's Willie Carson who wins the derby on Troy Dickens Hill is second then comes Northern Baby 
Ah, oh, lovely to see that again. That was 1979. I remember Willie Carson this year did something similar with uh, with Erhard, but he came on the inside, didn't he? So. Mm, yes, he did, but it was a similar kind of run. Uh, he obviously hasn't lost the habit in, what, 15 years? He hasn't. Well, you haven't lost the habit in, what, 17 years you've been reading the racing results for us. What are you going to do in the future, John? Well, I shall uh, do mostly writing, I hope. Um, I've got my history of the jockey club to complete. I've got yeah. a couple of other book projects the next year. I obviously contribute to magazines of one sort and another. I have done for some time. Time. Mm. Uh, I mean, you say I'm retiring, but I don't think I'm really retiring. It's a bit like the old soldiers never die. You know, they yeah. just end up reading racing results. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, I hope you and Ginny enjoy yourselves in the future. And uh, by the way, we thought we would club together, and I thought we'd give you something rather nice. At least you'd be able to watch the start and the end of the program. This is rather nice. And this is it. It's a lovely watch. JT. On behalf of the Channel 4 team, can I wish you very happy retirement in the future and thank you from all the Channel 4 viewers for reading us out lots of winners and unfortunately lots of losers as well. Good luck, John. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank, thank you, you very, very much indeed. And I'd like to say thank you to all the team and all my colleagues in television, of course, and all my friends in racing too. And especially the boys in the Grosvenor Arms at Newmarket. And I hope they've got a large one waiting for me on the bar tomorrow. I hope they will. <laughs> thank you, JT. <coughs> Well, we all wish John all the very, very best, and I'm sure we'll continue to see him around the race courses. Now, Mark Johnson's already had one winner this afternoon, and one of his stable stars is running in our next race. That is the aptly named Star Rage, and such a star is he that he's won the Channel 4 trophy for clocking up the most wins on the turf this season. He's actually had seven wins on the turf, but nine wins overall, because two were on the all-weather. There we see him, owned by Mr and Mrs Abel, trained by Mark Johnson, who also trained the winner of last year's trophy, Shirley Rose. The runners up there, Robin Lake, Early Skeel and Sumo Quinn. So well done to them, but not quite enough to catch Star Rage. He's given Mark Johnson nine of his 113 wins this season, but those seven on the turf started back at, Ed at Edinburgh in May, when Star Rage was rated just 39 in the handicap. He won four races that month, the other two being on the all-weather, and then went on to win two in June, two more in July, one in August, and I'm sure they'll be hoping for maybe clocking up another one today in November. We can see one of those wins, which was at Beverly in the Electrolux Handicap. It was one of those races in July. Usual partner, Jason Weaver, who again has been in such tremendous form this afternoon. And the unfortunate this afternoon, Thunderheart, is the horse who chases him up the hill here at Beverly with Jason's partner, well, so I should say uh, colleague, Frankie Dettori. Of course, the two of them have had many close races in the championship this season, but Star Age plugs on gamely, as always, always giving him his best. And now today when he's running, he's rated 77, so he's gone up 38 pounds through the season. All the very best of luck to him today. Fantastic, this horse, isn't he, Star Rage? And David and Juliana Abel are the lucky owners of this. And I say, look, you've been telling me you've been wanting to win this Challenge for Trophy for a few years now, Juliana. That's right. We were hoping to win it last year last year with Jimmy the Skunk, and we just got pipped. And we hoped to win it in 92 with Branston Abbey, and we just got pipped, so third time lucky. Third time lucky. David, where did you buy this horse, and how much? Well, a good advert for Har Harry Beebe. Uh, we bought uh, him for £4,000 at Doncaster St. Ledger Sales. Is that all? Mm. And how much has he won since? Then. Well, he's won 40 odd thousand this year, but he didn't really race much as a two and three year old. Yeah. But he's really come good this year. Why is it that he's come good? I mean, he's, he's run up an amazing sequence and he has two on the all weather as well, Juliana. That's right. I think he's just a very slow maturing horse. Mm -hmm. And he was beautifully trained as a two year old and a three year old. and But he just wasn't himself. Mm -hmm. And he's been growing and growing and growing. Well, he's really grown up into a nice sort. And David, what about today? I mean, Michael Hill's about to run. What's the, what's the late inside word? Yeah, well, I think we're running it because we want to give him a chance of, uh, of breaking the all-time 20th century record. Yeah. I don't think we're really very hopeful. The ground's too soft for him. But you've got to do it. Are there, are there many more opportunities for you? None at all, really. None no. at all? No. Well, I hope you do it. But win, lose or draw today, it gives me many congratulations to present you both with the Channel 4 trophy for the horse who's won most races on the flat during March, from March 4 to November on the turf in 1994. And I think there could be a few celebrations tonight. Definitely. Whatever he does today, he's been so fabulous. And we've got, he owes, he owes us nothing. He's great. Well, I wish you all the very best and hopefully you. see you in the winner's enclosure. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope so.
A result for Newcastle, the 245, won by number four, Spanish Fair, the even money favourite. Second number three, Seagull Hollow, 11 to 10. And third number two, Excise Man at 20 to 1, and four ran. So the jockey's getting mounted in the paddock for our last live flat race of 19. 94. It's the Colite Dragon Handicap, and this two miles is really going to take some getting today. Our wishes and our good lucks go out to Star Rage as he hopes to achieve this 20th century record of 10 handicap wins. At the moment, he disputes it with two other horses. Can he make the outside record here? Two non runners, 15 blaze away in 16 Thunderheart. Still a competitive field. Rawley Gilbert. Mighty competitive, Derek, and two miles, half a furlong to be precise, the trip for these. Uh, three-year-olds and upwards with a rating up to 95. They're headed by number one, Jack Button, partnered by Michael Wiggum at 12 to 1. Two, My Desire, the first of the Mary Reevely Quartet. This one, 14 to 1, Darren Moffat claiming five. Three is Purple Splash with a visor on for the very first time, Richard Perham, 25 to 1. Four, star player, Philip Robinson at 12 to 1. And then Bardolph, last year's 10 to 1 winner, Blinkered again, Richard Quinn who rode him last year, again in the saddle, 10 to 1 again. This time, Six is Star Rage, Michael Hill, 16 to 1. Seven is uh, Good Hand, Nicky Connaughton at uh, 16 to 1. Then the favourite, Shujan, number eight, 100 to 30 with Gary Carter. Nine, Mondragon, parted by Kevin Darley at 10 to 1. Ten is Fate Gallant. Fate Gallant, now Luca Gamani's sole representative with the Thunderheart and on runner Jason Weaver at 6 to 1. Eleven is requested. Parted by John Stack, he claims a useful five. 50 to one, though. 12, Old Red, Jimmy Fortune, 14 to one. 13 is uh, Grey Power, written by John Williams at uh, 10 to one. 14, Garden District, 25 to one, David Harrison. And then the two non-runners, firstly, Blaze Away, and uh, secondly, uh, Thunderheart, 15 and 16. Number 17, Home from the Hill. The uh, filly, she's written by Wendell Woods, a 16 to 1 shot, likewise at 16 to 1. Number 18, Secret Serenade, parted by Jason Tate, who claims three. 16 runners then for this Colite Dragon Handicap. Well, there's number five, Bardolph, and uh, I tell you what, this race looks nearly as difficult to work out as the November Handicap. But this horse could give us a good visual clue as to who's going to win this afternoon. For this horse, Bardolph won this race last year, and he had no fewer than six of his rivals today behind him in this race 12 months ago. The last uh, furlong and a half now, Bardolph has put daylight between himself and the rest, and he's clear. Bardolph from home from the hill, and then Elberg, star player, after those iota dropping away. They're well inside the final furlong and tailed off now right at the back of the field is the early leader, Subsonic. But it's going to be Bardolph who's going to take it. Star player coming with a rear rattle at the end. Can't quite get up there. And it's Bardolph who lands the Coli Dragon handicap from star player in second. There, cert there certainly could not be a more deserving winner than Bardolph. He's been running really well all the year in the top staying handicaps. He was second in the Ascot Stakes, third in the Goodwood Stakes, close seventh in the Cesarevich. Again and again, he's just found one or two too good for him. It would be nothing but justice if he could win this again today. Smashing horse, Bardolph. Wouldn't know how to give less than his best. There was plenty of money this morning for the Curly on Philly, Fate Gallant, who won at Nottingham last time out and had uh, grey power and good hand behind her. Yeah. Trained and ridden, as our last winner was, by uh, Luca Kamani and Jason Weaver. Not a very big filly, Fate Gallant, but um, she's certainly got an engine in her. Yeah, she could be improving too, because she only had only had not all that many runs, seven runs this season. Uh, you might be and, uh, John, you take take a bit of a chance on whether she's going to go on this ground. A lot of Kaleons, they love it um, fast. She definitely acts on firm ground, uh, as you say. It's it, it, it's 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 a gamble. But by all accounts, it's a gamble the punters are taking. Let's hear from Alistair. Well, this is really developing into a head-to-head -head here. Shujan and Fate Gallant. Shujan well backed in the offices this morning. Opened 72 on course. 
then three to one was eased to 100 to 30 in the face of a concerted move for fake Gallant. Opened at sevens, 11 to two, and is now nine to two. One of the rails firms has had 6,000 on to shorten up fake Gallant. So the live money is fake Gallant, and the early money for Shujan, although fake Gallant was backed by the right faces this morning in the offices. Well, there certainly won't be a gamer horse in this field than Shujan. He's a really tough front runner, either over hurdles or on the flat. Uh, he was taken over at the beginning of last season by Red Jake Hurst. Uh, ran really well for him uh, as a novice over hurdles. Didn't run on the flat until September, but since then, there's uh, all the evidence is that he's been coming on with each appearance. He definitely acts on the ground, and although he'll probably make make the running, that's an awful big task to stay in front for most of two miles. Nevertheless, he'll take a lot of catching. What caught your eye, John? Well, Shu Jan did. He's a horse who's um, powerfully made and plenty of stamina for this sort of going on the way to post. Great power for one of Mary Reevely's three runners. Caught all his eye and. Quite surprisingly, really, fake Galante. Well, she was the one that the punters wanted. Kujan, the 130 favourite. Fake Galante is at 4 to 1, open at 7s. And Mondragon is 10 to 1 from 9 to 1. Grey Power is steady on the 10 to 1 mark, and Bardolph 11 to 1 from 10s. Jack Button 12 to 1 from 10 to 1, and my desire another 12 to 1 chance this time from 14s. Star Player is at 14 to 1 from 12s, and Old Red another 14 to 1 shot, 16 to 1 Bardolph. We don't know for sure, that's Mondragon with the diamond uh, on the back of Kevin Darley. We don't know for certain whether he acts on the ground. We do know that he stays, though. He ran a really good race in the Cesarevich, one of several in this field who did. He was sixth, in fact, in the Cesarevich. And uh, you can see Star Player there with the uh, diamonds on his, on his colours. Well, Star Player has been much criticised. Time form gives him a squiggle. But uh, since he broke a long losing run at Chester. He's been running really well since then and certainly ran a tremendous race uh, to be fifth in the Cesarevich. Well, Bardolph just leading in purple splash. I think Peter Makin's runner is going to be one of the last ones in. Our last flat race of the season is just about to get underway. Rawley, they're all yours. Thanks a lot, John. Three to one, Shu Jan, fate Gallant at fours. And then it's 10 to 1 Mon Dragon. Uh, and they're running. So, two miles and half a furlong ahead of them. And in the early part of the race, it's last year's winner, Bardolph, with Fate Gallant nearest to us. Over on the far side, right against the rails, comes Garden District, very prominent, as is Secret Serenade. They passed the post and completed the first furlong. The last three in this early stage are Grey Power, My Desire, and finally at 16th place, requested. So making this first turn, and it's Fate Gallant going on from Shujan. So the two vying for favoritism, one and two at the moment. In third place now, settle back to third, Bardolph. Then four, Secret Serenade, five is uh, Garden District in sixth place, Purple Splash, seven home from the hill, eight towards the outside, Star Rage, and in ninth comes Jack Button. And then at 10, Good Hand, 11, Mondragon, 12, Star Player, 13, Old Red, 14 is Grey Pound, still 15 and 16, My Desire, and requested. They've completed roughly three and a half furlongs, and Fate Gallant nearest the rails. She's uh, in that uh, yellow jacket, blue cap, and then with a red cap towards the outside, Shujan. And Shujan now has uh, taken it up. So Shujan, who is a rail down stair, has gone on after about uh, four and a half furlongs to go into the lead. So it's Shujan now one, Fate Gallant two, and then Bardolph who uh, won it last year, going strong, is still in three. In fourth place is uh, Secret Serenade, one of the lighter weights, followed by Garden District, still very prominent. They're getting a bit strung out. Purple Splash follows that group, and they're meeting the uh, rise over on the far side now. Shujan with uh, Gary Carter by almost two lengths now from uh, Fate Gallant, Jason Weaver, the jockey in form, and then Bardolph in three, still Secret Serenade comes next, followed by Garden District, and uh, Shu Jan confirmed as the three to one favorite, Fate Gallant four to one, and 10 to one bar these two. And those two are still leading the field as they come now two halfway in this Coli Dragon handicap. Shu Jan, the uh, 
here at Newbury the other day. Xu Jan from Fate Gallant and then Bardolf right behind those two still is a Secret Serenade with Garden District very prominent there followed by Purple Splash. Making a little bit of ground now, Star Rage also creeping up towards the outside of his field is Star Player with the uh, green cap. And they're now inside the final six furlongs. Shu Jan by a little more than two legs from Fate Galon, Bardolf, Secret Serenade. Bond Dragon has made ground to go up into five. And then Star Player still improving. Garden District hanging on but being scrubbed along. Grey Power has made very good headway on the outside. That's the one with the uh, yellow sleeves and cap. So they're nearing the uh, home turn. They've got roughly five furlongs to go, and Xu Jian still leads, but they're all beginning to close on the leader. With Bardolf coming again strongly towards the outside, Purple Splash, the visored runner against the fence not far away. And uh, after them, Star Rage trying to get on terms. My Desire and Great Power, two up on the outside. Star Player's run seems to have come to an end. Good Hand is dropping right away. They're well into the straight now. And uh, as they come on now inside the final half mile, Xu Jian still valiantly holding the lead. But Mon Dragon now looking a real danger on the outside. Mon Dragon being produced by uh, Ke Kevin Darla to get much, much closer. After those two, Jack Button, he's staying on, trying to get through over on the far rails. That is a purple splash. And Mon Dragon now is asked to pick up, and he's doing just that, or trying to in this really heavy ground, but he's gone into the lead. Mon Dragon from Shu Jan, and then Star Rage. Down to the final uh, two furlongs they've come. It's Mon Dragon slogging it out with Shu Jan, and then Star Rage. My Desire has made a lot of ground, and he's coming strongly in that very dark colored jacket, purple splash, and old red now is getting into the race for the first time. Down to the distance they come. Mon Dragon with Shu Jan answering every call on the far side. My Desire, though, is uh, trying to pick up these two and Old Red and these are the first four they've gone on from uh, Star Rage and Jack Button but close home Mon Dragon and Shu Jan absolutely nothing and it looks like it's going to the photo Shu Jan though just prevails Shu Jan bravely wins it from Mon Dragon second Old Red is third in four Midas are five Jack Button then Star Rage almost as the war Fate Galant Purple Splash Great Power followed in by Home on the Hill Star Player Good Hand Garden District and in the end the last three were Bardolf requested and finally a Secret Serenade Shu Jan then, justifying favoritism, three to one favorite. He's the winner, number eight, owned by Sir Eric Parker, trained at Epsom by Reg Akerst, having a marvelous season. That was his 48th winner, and it takes jockey Gary Carter on to 56. In uh, second place was number nine, that was Mondragon, under Kevin Darley, and in third, Old Red, number 12, written by Jimmy Fortune. Fourth home was number two, My Desire, with uh, Darren Moffitt. But here we go with the two principals here absolutely locked together, fighting it out. Two very brave horses kicking up the divots, as you can say, see coming through the mud with Shu Jan, who'd been out there in the lead for such a long, long way when uh, seemingly collared by Mondragon, came back at him. And uh, it was his guts that prevailed. And you can see how pleased that Gary Carter is as he gets the verdict. What a lovely end to the flat race season. I must say, I look forward to the jumping season, but you couldn't have a better climax than that, and we won't see many more exciting finishes. No, well, well hopefully you'll be seeing Xu Jan jumping throughout the winter, and let's say well done to Gary Carter, because he took the race by the scruff of the neck and set a blistering gallop. Three horses passed him, turning for home, and he was tough, but what a wonderful horse this is. He just didn't know when he was beaten. Got a very roundy old action. You could see him trying his heart out there when he uh, got collared with a furlong to go. Just have a look at this. You don't need to know anything about horses to um, feel for this one because he's really put everything he's got into this. You've got to say, well, bad luck for Mary Reevely. She's provided the second, third, and fourth. And it's Mon Dragon who's just taken over at this stage. And Gary Carter, has been shoving and kicking for quite some time at this point. There's no doubt that that rail's a big help. Mondragon here. Just have a look at um, Star Rage because he really gives his owners a great run for their money at the end of the season. The horse coming this side with lots of weight, 9-7. Darren Moffat, My Desire. And the other one of Mary Reeve is Old Red, just in fourth place at this stage. But just look at requested. Mondragon's given his all, but this horse just wouldn't be denied really relentless galloper right the way to the line and you just have a look he's only got a tiny little stride on him hardly seems as though he's covering any ground but he's got his head and heart in the right position and uh, thrilling win well the punters are very happy with that one a real roar as that 
an epic duel, really. Kate took place up the straight. G. Carter at his strongest, and a real wasn't born, it was quarried, that Shu Jan. It's returned three to one, and the three Reevelys that followed it home. Mondragon also put it all in at 12 to one. Old Red, 14s, and My Desire, 14 to one. Labrooks moved late for the winner to make sure they didn't go off more than three to one. A really tough sort, and the Yorkshire crowd loved it. And further confirmation of the starting price and the Ted returns. First number eight, Shujan, three to one favourite, was the winner. Second number nine, Mondragon, 12 to one. Third number 12, Old Red at 14 to one. And the fourth horse, number two, My Desire, 14 to one again. The tote paid 380 the win. The place is 150, 230, 330 and 310. The draw forecast came to 16 pounds, 60 pence. Non-runners were numbers 15 and 16 and 16 run. And a Sandown, the 255, went to number two, Glemert, nine to four. Second, number three, Jailbreaker, six to four, favourite. And third, number five, Skull at 12 to one, five round. Well, we've finished the racing action on the flat for 1994 in the best possible way. Thanks to this fellow, Shu Jen, who was given a super ride by Gary Carter, who said one word to me as he got off, oxygen. <laughs> anyway, let's look back and see, see how the races have finished here at Doncaster on this, the last day of 1994. 94. This was Saxon Maid coming back after winning a thrilling November handicap. Her win later, but now the other finishes. And still anybody's race with Dancing Sue now putting in uh, his bid and coming on very strongly indeed. It's better get on on the far side, being pressed now by Dancing Sue coming between the two is Q Factor. Just below the distance and Q Factor bursts through with the white sleeves is finishing dust of all. It's going to be Q Factor, I think, is going to get this one. Q Factor and Alan Mackay from Dancing Sue and then better get on. L Dom finishing strongly is Nana May who may get into the frame, but up towards the line and it is Q Factor. Ishtiak on the near side, hard to figure's dropped away, and so too Spaniards close. But emerging from the mist as they come now down to the last long and a half, and it's double blue still, double blue against the far rails. Being strongly ridden left-handed, but going on by about a length and a half. Great deeds coming. Branston Abbey on the near side. It could be a Mark Johnson one, two, but Brari is finishing best of all. Brari with Michael Hills coming through late, but double blue's going to hang on. Close home, it's going to be double blue from Branston Abbey. Might just have got second. And Zilzal Zaman over against the rails with uh, Kevin Darley ahead. Cartier Chief is not finding a great deal as they come down to the distance. And Zilzal Zaman looks like collecting this one. He's really acting on the ground. Cartier Chief, I think these conditions are finding him out. Limpat West will only be third. These three well cleared Al Jazaf, said Ella Passage and Velvet Moon. But running up to the winning line, and it's Zilzal Zaman and Kevin Darley who get it very easily in the end from the favourite Cartier Chief. Limpat West is third. And a rundown on today's winners at Doncaster. The 1255 won by number 18, Q Factor, 5 to 1 favourite. The 125 by number 3, Double Blue, at 7 to 1. The 155 went to number 7, Zilzel Zaman, 7 to 2. And the 230 was won by number 12, Saxon, made it 16 to 1. Finally, the 305 went to number 8, Shujan, the 3 to 1 favourite. Now, the champion tips the competition, 148 points was the maximum today. If you've got 90 or more, I don't think there'll be many people with 90 or more, but if you have, get on the phone quick. Uh, well, between 5 o'clock today and midday tomorrow to claim possible 500 pounds to you, 071 757 7010. It's been a day of doubles. Not only has Jason Weaver clocked up a double here at Doncaster, at Sandown, Dubasilla and Raquel have given David Nicholson a double, the latter running away with the KP McVitty hurdle. At Chepstow, Richard Dunwoody rode a double, which took him to his fastest ever 50 winners. So well done to him. That was on Country Lad and Her Honour. There was also a double there for Carl Llewellyn and Nigel Twiston Davis with Sweet Duke and Flap Jack Lad. Quite tricky to say. Up at Newcastle, Morselli won the Ekbalco hurdle and trainer Howard Johnson now has a dilemma as to whether to keep him to hurdling or send him novice chasing. If the latter, he'll probably be out at Liverpool later this month. And also up at Newcastle, well done to Swanee Haldane, who had his first winner for two years with Highland Man in the three-mile novice chase. Two years is a long time, so really well done. 
just uh, Michael Wiggum has uh, came in on uh, Bob, uh, which one was he riding? He was riding Jack Button and he was so tired that he'd been in the sauna all morning that he collapsed. But he's walked in, he's just laying down now and he's going to be all right. Well, that's just about it from Channel 4 for the flat racing season on the turf for 1994. But, you know, we've all got our memories. We've backed some big winners, classic winners you might remember, or perhaps you've had a nice big winner at your local track. But in years to come, looking back, 1994 will surely be remembered as the year of Frankie Dottori, the young Italian has uh, made it with over 230 winners to his credit and you know although he's been at it from day one he's a man who keeps smiling and isn't it a welcome change to have a top sportsman who smiles all the way to the bank he's the man we've come to know and love as Frankie I'm sure that'll stay on a lot of people's videos as a real classic to keep of racing memories. Well done to Frankie, a great guy for racing. Now, did you have a go at the pitch puzzle? And if so, are you one of the lucky winners of the three £100 prizes? There we go. Not too tricky, was it? Warm spell. All I have to say, I've just asked the producer what was the result, so I wasn't doing too well. Now, who were the three people who were well ahead of me and got it right? There we are. Sheila Walton from Tudor Road, St Albans, Hertfordshire. Graham Rushton from Red Wing Close in Telford and Peter Tudge from Gutteridge Street, Colville in Leicestershire. Really well done to all of them. Well, on the morning line next week, nine o'clock on Channel 4. Now for the very last time, we have uh, an SP from JT. And JT, how appropriate, old boy.
<laughs> I think you're right, Derek, and I think the Colonel would agree as well. First number one, Better by the Glass, two to one favourite. Second number seven, Grunge at 16 to one. And third number 17, Country Store at seven to one. 19 ran, and it's goodbye from me. You enjoy yourself in the future, JT. Now then, we, uh, we're going to end uh, with a guy who's, who's moving on. Charlie Merlis here, who came over here a few years ago and really turned this place around. Highlights over the past few years, Charlie? I suppose Sunday Racing. Mm. Sunday Racing, a great success story, thanks to the Channel 4 team. Yeah. Um, the St. Ledger, the Colite sponsored this year's Teleconnection. And mm. today, you know, you couldn't ask for a better finish than that, could you? You were telling me that you've increased the corporate hospitality. It started, what, £25,000 or something? Yes. The, before we took over, the racetrack used to sell it. Mm. Now we do it ourselves. We have our own team, and it's increased tenfold. And where are you going to increase it tenfold from now on? Well, Punches Town, I mean, I'm following on after Joan Moore, and there's nobody better than Joan, so I'll have to try and do my best. We wish you all the best. I think you can become a father soon. How's uh, the any moment Rona? now. Well, any uh, moment. And father, <laughs> Stuart, all right, the old trainer? He's grand, yes, he's grand. He's uh, recovering in hospital, but he's good. W wish you plenty of luck, and good luck with the baby. Thank I hope you, it goes well for you. you Charlie Merlis. We can't keep a good man down. JT is bouncing back for more. Indeed I am. Newcastle to 3.15 and it's on Holy Alliance, 11 to 8 on favourite. Second number four, Durham Sunset, 5 to 2. And third number three, Fever Bella, 7 to 1 and 4 round. <laughs> and that really is the end of the 1994 flat racing season here on Channel 4. We hope you've enjoyed it and we'll leave you with the last big handicap, the Tote Credit November handicap and what Saxon made coming late and fast. See you soon. Toodaloo. They're on the side, they're nearing the final half furlong now, and it is Saxon Maid, brought through by Jason Weaver to take it up late. Saxon Maid is going to win this one in the end, quite comfortably, they're finishing like Loudest Cavalry, but Saxon Maid gains the upper hand. Saxon Maid, Jason Weaver win the November handicap. Italy. It's swirling around an area of low pressure, not moving.